Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Right now, you can get big discounts on all fire pits during Solo Stove's summer sale. Use promo code Nate at solostove.com for an extra $10 off. That is solostove.com, promo code Nate for $10 off on top of their incredible summer sales discount. Life is busy and your well-being is important. Athletic Greens makes it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day with just one scoop. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Nate. Terms and conditions apply. All right. I guess I read my ad so good last week. They were like, <laughs> They're like we're that's all good. set. <laughs> yeah. They go, that's enough. <laughs> hey, Bear. Uh, welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm here with Aaron Weber, Brian Bates, uh, Dusty Slay. Uh, we're having some work done at our house, so if you hear some grinding, I guess, uh, you might, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be happening. Uh, I don't think it was planned. Uh, I, I guess we were hoping it wasn't going to happen during the show, but it is. So Tough to drown out cutting concrete, too. Yeah, that's yeah. hard, you know. That's hard. I know the <laughs> podcast next door is having trouble, too. Uh, <laughs> good. Just multiple podcasts in the <laughs> in the cul-de-sac. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so hopefully uh, it won't be too annoying for you. But yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> here we are. Uh, I just got back. Uh, we got back last night. I was in uh, 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 Selbyville, Delaware. Awesome time. And then uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, which is very cool. Back to the scene of the crime. Of uh, Cape Fear Serpentarium. Yeah. We had, I need a, the, uh, uh, t- Terry, the uh, Dean, the guy that owned that place, it's his sister. Yeah. She emailed me and uh, we, I emailed her and we were trying to hook up, uh, but it, it did not happen. And, uh, but it was, it, it was cool. Like, I think the owners of the new place, I guess that was her or something, whoever, uh, they came to the show and uh, it was cool. It was, the Wilmington was awesome. It was fun to be back into Wilmington. And, uh, you know, all the people that came out and stuff, it was, the show was unbelievable. Uh, so we had a good time. And then we went to, then I went to Wyndham Championship, the Wyndham Golf Tournament. Oh, yeah. So you got to walk inside the ropes. The kid that won, his name's Tom Kim. His name's, uh, I don't even know his first name uh, <laughs> because he goes by Tom. And he goes by Tom because he's watched Thomas the Train. Really? Yeah, he's Korean. And super he, young, right? Yeah, super young. 20 years old. Second youngest to win it in 90 years. Wow. And, uh. He he shot a, he almost shot a fifty nine yesterday. We were like in his group following him. Wow! And uh, it was it was it was awesome to get to watch him. Uh, but yeah, it goes by Tom. He saw Thomas the train. He was like, I like that. He goes, I'll just have people call me Tom. So right. everybody calls him Tom Kim. <laughs> wow. And then it's not, and his 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 name is something else. But he, Kim Ju Young. Kim Ju Young. Yeah. 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 So it was fun. So I did that. Uh, my buddy Doug. We walked around. It was a good time. You know, we had a little fun. Fun adventure. I don't know if I had anything, trying to think of anything crazy. but I was home this weekend, but I was watching golf and had a Seinfeld Kramer moment. I look and I'm like, Nate? Oh, did you? <laughs> I had no idea that you were there, but yeah. you were on TV. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Like, I mean, very briefly, yeah. but but you could see you standing, oh, standing back the there. Oh, at the tournament? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. But it was very much like Jerry and Kramer or George. Or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, is that Nate? <laughs> yeah. Did you, why are you watching golf? Just had it on? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just sitting there. I watched women's golf yesterday. That's, oh, how, yeah. that's how when you're sitting there feeding a baby, whatever is, comes on TV, you just keep watching. Yeah, yeah. it's got to <laughs> be real peaceful too with the baby. Yeah, you need a real, you know. That's true. Yeah, that's true. golf is nice for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't watch a UFC fight holding the baby. It's right? a lot. It feels uncomfortable. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. To really dive into it and just yeah, it would be very uncomfortable. I watch Better Call Saul sometimes. Late at night, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. there can be some violence on there. Yeah, yeah. There's cartels and 
Well, I'm saying I, I'm not immune to feeding my baby okay. while watching something uh, that's okay. got some violence. I also uh-huh. felt like that was a boring show, though. I feel like that you could get some real sleep done with the mm-hmm. baby there, too. You're not a fan? Maybe I did not get far enough. There's just a lady that was just smoking cigarettes all the time. I was like, I don't. I think that describes it. Yeah, I mean, she was yeah. always smoking cigarettes, and then the other guy was afraid of electricity. I was like, I kind of relate to that guy, but I was like, <laughs> yeah, that I guy. Mean, shortly did. after that, I was I was thinking, well, maybe I don't like electricity either. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. killing. It made sense. Yeah, it did make. Just sense. turned the electricity off. Yeah, and then I'm like, well, you know, I need it. Yeah, but I was relating to that guy. Yeah, that guy is not well. Yeah, that's I the, know. That's the yeah. whole point of the character. Yeah, <laughs> Is that he's insane. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how much of the hassle keeps would keep you from living that way. It's the how are just a wife, of people. Just a wife and a daughter. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm calling the hassle. Would like it? The wife and daughter are there. That's what yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I refer to as the hassle. It's family uh, that won't go down the road with you. Yeah, I think my daughter could get into it. She's young enough that we could just start doing it and she It'd might be fun. not notice. It's all yeah. she would know. Yes. But my wife would would appreciate it if I kept the electricity. Yeah. But it, it would be like if you want to go live like off the grid, it, it's it's just a lot. It's going to be a, you know. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, because I think that I would like to get into it until I'm out there. And then I'm like, man, this is boring, you know, because I'm so used to my distractions. Yes. You know. That's true. And you want to distract. You want to look at your phone. You don't want to have to, want, every time your eyes are open, it's like we got to look for food. Right. You know, because I could go out and chop wood or something, but that's, yeah, that's not going to last so long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Well, I love Better Call Saul, and there's only like two episodes left. And everyone makes fun of me for still having cable, but if you don't have it, how long do you have to wait to see something like that on streaming? Uh, I mean, you can immediately after it airs, you can find it. Somewhere. Like immediately? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, never mind. It's but. still going. <laughs> Yeah, there's like two or three episodes left. Oh, yeah, it's I thought the last this season. was a show way in the past. Yeah. I mean, it started a few years ago, I, and people really love it. Like, yeah, it's it was, awesome. yeah. I watched, uh, I watched a few seasons of it, and it was great. And then I just kind of was see, like, that's right. how I was too. Though I'm like, I like this, but then it just I fizzled out. So I'm like, did I really like it's, it that much? Uh, you could have. It's like too much. It's I, like I just I like I like Breaking Bad a lot, and I've watched it a few times. Like I go back through it, mm-hmm. and did you watch that? I did watch that. Yeah. I like that a lot. And then so when the new one comes of the same thing, it's like you can do it. Then you're like, all right, I, I kind of want a new. It's, I was. It's like Narcos. I love Narcos on Netflix, all that stuff. But I haven't watched the last season because you're just kind of like, all right, I, I don't know if I can do this again. Another, you know. Yeah, I want to go into a different world for. Yeah, bit. yeah. I feel like it might be the last show, great show that's on regular. T- like everything's streaming now, and when you look at the. Uh, Emmy nominations or whatever. It's all shows on a streaming platform. Better Call Saul is like the last one, maybe on a, and that's on like a cable network, but, Mm -hmm. and This Is Us just ended and I think that was pretty popular and that was on NBC. That's probably the last on broadcast TV that. Yeah, I don't uh, even know if I know of any. A show period. Uh, Yeah. On one of the main networks. When I'm at my dad's house, we watched the TV show Mom. He likes that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know how this is on TV. It gets wild, that show. Yeah, it's on TV land now. Ruth watches it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's TV pretty land? dirty yeah. for TV land, especially. Or CMT or one. I mean, there's not new episodes, oh, right? Okay. I didn't know. I think it's over. It's like Andy Griffith. When I thought <laughs> yeah. It was real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, Andy Griffith, that's a good show. That's a good, that's a great show. show. Yeah. <laughs> but you think mom is being filmed every day and it's been off the air for. <laughs> I mean, a show like that, you just yeah. keep it going, you know? A mm-hmm. couple of addicts living in a house with a... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's in black and white. But yeah. It's a good show. <laughs> Did you do anything? I was in Seattle. had kind of a crappy travel day yesterday. I had a 5 a.m. flight, which always sounds good until you're about to do it. So I got... You stay up? I got back to my hotel at midnight, and I had a 3 a.m. Uber. So I got... About an hour and 45 minutes worth of sleep. Almost wish I hadn't have done that. I think you got, I always convince myself I'm taking a nap. I just go, I'm going to take a little nap. I might not even get undressed oh, and just okay. kind of lay there and be like, I'm going to just take a little nap. And you're, you're not putting the, that much pressure on the sleep. <laughs> That's interesting. You can kind of trick your body into to going like, we're just taking a nap. Yeah. We're, we're not up. trying to get eight hours. Don't be upset when you wake up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the undress nap is the way to go. Because if you get undressed and you get in the covers, you're in bed. Yeah. 
But if you just and then you got to get up and get ready. But if you just have kind of everything on, yeah, just keep your yeah, shoes, shoes on. on. Yeah, and just you really can't. I just, like to wear a hat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the full effect. Don't even take the glasses off. <laughs> you, you don't even let yourself see yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But I took a 3 a.m. Uber and then a flew to Nashville, connecting flight. Couldn't land in Nashville because of the storms yesterday. So we had to go to Louisville and land, and then we couldn't leave the plane. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, I mean, dude, I've been – it was like 14 hours yeah, before I was able to land tough. in Nashville. But now I'm back. There you go. Well, that club that you went to is the only club where the owner yelled at me. And you said a comic <laughs> told you that. And didn't even, uh, you didn't even bring it up. No. So they no. let you know. That was memorable in, for the you're, comics. You're infamous up there. Yeah, <laughs> for getting yelled at by the owner for no reason, really. But we had a good time. And I went to West Palm Beach this weekend. You want to say why you got yelled at? Oh, well. I mean, just yeah. you brought it up. <laughs> well, I'll say. But yeah, I mean. He had, Dusty stole something. Go ahead. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, when, when I'm doing a show, I'm used to like a host, feature, and then me. Right, mm. and then there was like seven people on the show, and so we're doing a showcase. They're doing every topic that you could possibly do. It's long, so I go to the guy and I go, "Hey, do you think we could maybe use less people on the show?" And he's like, "This is my club. I'll do what." And he's like, <laughs> he yelled at me in the bar, and then I go sit down, and then he comes in the showroom and yells at me while the show's going on. And you had to go up. And then yeah. I got to go up and do comedy. I'm like, hey, we're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're not. Yeah. I just got yelled at, but hey, we're having fun. We're having here. fun. Yeah. You're the only one not having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the other, I mean, I'm happy to know that the other comics saw it and were like, I don't know what was happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were at West Palm Beach? West Palm Beach. And the last time I was there, 2019, I hated it. I was like, I never want to come here again. This time, complete 180. I was like, now I want to move to West Palm. I yeah. mean, it's it was amazing. It's fun. So fun. Yeah. I got out in the sun. I got some, I got I laid out by the pool. I don't think I got burned, right? But every picture that people took with me, my face is like beat red. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with the camera and my face, but uh, I like I'm, I got high blood pressure. Did you go to the beach? Picture. I just went to the pool. Yeah. You ever go to the beach? Uh, you know, I lived in Charleston for a long time. I lived on Folly Beach. I used to go to the beach all the time, but I'm pretty good on it now. Did the uh, when you grew? Have you ever been there with long hair to the beach? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you went recently when you got your fingers oh, yeah. stuck. That's true. Oh yeah, that is true. Out on Dolphin Island, yeah. My my nail is still not really healed from that. It's all dented up now. Your mm. finger does look weird. Yeah, it's a bad finger now. <laughs> but uh, West Palm Beach was great. I also went to Gainesville. Had a lot of fun there. Gainesville's fun. Yeah, yeah. it's a good time. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's start with the comments. Uh, Camden Harvey, great Scott. I love this. I've been waiting for an e- this episode since twenty eight number twenty eight calendars when Nate, Aaron, and Bawa had mentioned doing a time episode as a joke. Since then, I couldn't wait to hear the guys make something so simple. So simple seems so complicated, and this delivered the goods. Looking forward to the next episode on kitchen cabinets. Ooh, that's a good idea. I would like mm. to do a kitchen cabinets episode. It's probably well, a lot of different kitchen options. Cabinets are pretty complicated. My brother in law sells kitchen cabinets. He works for a company that <laughs> sells go. kitchen. Well, uh, any kind of cabinets, really. It doesn't have to just be for the kitchen. Yeah. Oh. Bathrooms, any kind you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there another place? Well, there's a lot. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess there's cabinets yeah, in there's here. There's cabinets in here. You can do podcasts. A lot, doors, cabinets. A, lot of a lot of doors, a lot of wheels. A lot of doors, a lot of wheels. Brad McClung. I was flying home from a wedding on the day the time changed. Our flight was at 5 a.m. <laughs> And the airport was an hour and a half away. I was two time zones away from home, and the time changed at 2 a.m. I feel like a relatively smart person, but I could not tell for the life of me what time to set my alarm for or how long it would be until I landed in Nashville. I eventually counted back from my flight time and just set a timer to go off instead of setting an alarm. Having plans in the middle of the time change and across multiple time zones is very confusing. Yeah, I would just go to the airport now. (laughs) <laughs> that sounds so confusing. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, that's a lot. Time yeah. zones confuse me so much. My management and is in LA, and they'll sometimes send me, they'll be like, oh, this time Pacific time. And then I'm like, don't even send me those times. Just try to get it to me in central time because I'll miss the meeting. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I can't handle a time zone. Yeah, we have trouble. My uh, my sister is working with us. She, Abigail, has trouble with time zones. 
We got what did we do? I talk about that? Uh, well, last yeah. week we talked about yeah, yeah. on our phones. Yeah, yeah, that's about Abigail. Abigail didn't uh-uh. know. She was trying to figure out some time for some meeting, and she was she got into GMT somehow. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking? No one even knows what GMT is. <laughs> And she just, and then she's like sending me these times, and it's like, I don't even know, like Greenwich Mean. I'm like I'm not going to be there at. I mean, I was in a different time zone. The mountains ones are the ones that kind of the ones that are only like an hour. Yeah, like Eastern is like you get it because of TV. Pacific, you kind of get it. Yeah, and then Central because we live it. She, but she didn't know we lived in Central time zone. Really? Yeah. She goes, Abigail thought she goes. Are we now? Are we in Eastern time zone? I go. You've lived here. <laughs> Your whole life for thirty something years. You don't know what time zone we're in. I mean, that's a, that's the main problem. That's how you get me. <laughs> that's how you send me a GMT time. <laughs> what is GMT? Georgia no Mountain Time. Greenwich. We talked about it last week. Yeah, okay. it was a long time ago. <laughs> okay, that's where it started. The you Gre- learned a lot from Greenwich, that episode, England. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Someday you'll have a show in England, and she'll be on it, and she'll nail it. Yeah. Oh, that's the, oh okay. All right, I'm yeah. with you. Uh, it's go Yanks. I would like to stay standard time. In Georgia in summer, it's light at 10 p.m. on daylight savings. Ridiculous. Georgia passed a law and the U.S. Congress gave its blessings to stay on daylight savings. I'm seriously considering moving to a different state. It really messes with circadian <laughs> rhythms. <laughs> and I disdain it. No? I'm with you. What's the word? <laughs> circadian. Circadian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what those are. What is it? It's like your sleep cycle. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really messes with your sleep cycle. Could say that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> the one with circa day in. Circa, circa, all right. I thought that was an insect. <laughs> mm-hmm. Get some blackout curtains, you know? Yeah, you don't want to go down that. That's a... You know, when you next, start when you start tricking your body like that, it can be yeah, a problem. Yeah, I mean, you're two steps. You're on drugs now. <laughs> like it's you, you're just that's how it starts. That's how it starts. You just you don't know what time it is. That you is wake true. up. You live your own life, and you're just come out of every. Uh-huh. You come out. You've been you've slept for forty hours. Did I have I told you that in 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 college you there where it was you wouldn't get sunlight, so you'd have to go to these lamps that would simulate. There's sun lamps all over campus. People would go and just sit in front of them. Like a tan. Why wouldn't you get light? Yeah. This is just overcast. The weather's bad. You don't get good sunlight. For is this when you were good in chunk going of the to year. school in London? <laughs> no, this is in South Bend, Indiana. Huh. They don't get that much sun. They enough. call it the permacloud. It's for like nine months. You barely see the sun ever. It's just gray. It's overcast. It's gross. So they have these sun lamps all over campus. People go and sit and just soak up the vitamin D. Hmm. That's how it starts. That's how that's <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of, it all explains why we are where we are. <laughs> yeah, they're that, they're inside those lamps. Yeah, yeah. that's like a tanning bed. That's yeah. what I, I like a tanning bed in the wintertime. You know, you just go relax in there, just kick back. But you don't want electricity not in your to house. Get a tan from these. Things. What's that? You don't want electricity in your house, but you like a good tanning bed. I know. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's lots of contradictions going on here. I mean, I I, I admit it. I, but I love the sun. I'm all about it. This 10 p.m. thing. I wish that was happening here. I do too. I, I like the, the sun. sun. I love the sun too. It does a great job. <laughs> Club Greg. Time is created by man. Everything in our existence is on a timeline, life to death. There is no conceivable example for eternity. No, I, mean, I don't even know what that means. Well, I found Dusty's burner account. <laughs> <laughs> Send it in comments. Club to himself. Greg. I mean, I think it's like, like, you know. Heaven is eternity. It's we can't come or like I'll speak for myself. I can't comprehend eternity. I can comprehend a really, really, really long time, but you still think that's still thinking like there's an end. Something that never ends. I can't wrap my brain around. How do people say you can't comprehend it? And then there's a word for it though. Like, I mean, is it you don't fully understand like what how long eternity is? Like it's forever and you just don't know what's going to go on. We don't know what forever means. You understand what it means, like definitionally, but you can't wrap your head around what that really is like. Yeah, is definitionally a word. Uh, I don't know. I don't that think was so. a risk. Yeah, <laughs> that was a risk. <laughs> it sounded like I think it is a word. Well, I agree with this guy up until this last sentence. I mean, I, I'm tracking with him, and then we get to the last sentence, and I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> There's no yeah, conceivable I mean, example. Yeah, I mean, I think time is all made up. We could just be out here living, but now we got this thing keeping track of 
everything we're doing throughout the day. We should just be getting up, growing some food, eating, just hanging out, having a good time. <laughs> yeah, no instead, meetings. Yeah, instead we got to get up, we got to go to work, we got to pay taxes. You know yeah. what I mean? We're just out here <laughs> on the grind. You want to go back to a previous civilization. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, you know, I mean, of course, until I'm there and then I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I did like a conventional oven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you liked, you know. When you're gonna go hang out with some buddies and they don't show up till <laughs> dark, and right? You're like, I thought you go. You didn't say which dark. I thought you meant the dark in the morning, high noon. Yeah, a lot of high noon stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no way you're meeting anybody at high noon. It's got to be. You're like, yo, dude, it's one thirty. Yeah. Like, Is it? You'd like to go back to a sundial, I bet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about the sundial, but yeah, I mean, I, I it's like just the, the shadows idea from the of sun. Where, um, yeah, we're t- we're you know we're tracking things, you know, in a less calculated way. A little ease it up a little bit. Yeah, we're just free out here. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Yep, wearing a lot of animal skins. Well, yeah, you want to go live off the grid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But with <laughs> other people living off the grid, I don't want to be the one off the grid guy <laughs> just in a you. neighborhood of on the grid people. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I want us to all be doing it. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, I'd imagine the first steps of a cult is that mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's where you true. go. Yeah. But wouldn't right. that be the new grid? Wouldn't we just be all on that grid? Would well, you then create a time for your group that you've talked to? All the, a then they a go, good time. Yeah, yeah. Like they go, well, yeah. what time are we going to meet for dinner? And you go, I know I said I'm not four times, <laughs> but, you know. I'll ring a bell. I'll ring a bell to let you know it's time. Yeah. And so the time is based off you. But then we're not allowed to use that word. Oh, you call it something else. Something else. We come up with something else. You know, the just place so to there's be. no confusion. Your whole phrase is we're having a good time. Yeah, but not not if we were all off the grid. All right. We're having fun. <laughs> yeah. You changed it. We're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Always. Uh, Doc Holliday. In regards to time travel, I did some research and wrote an article on a Missouri dude who claimed to have invented a time machine in 1995, and two years later, he disappeared. It's pretty crazy. And then I read this article. He uh, There's a picture from 1930 on a beach where a guy died on the beach, and it looks like this guy. So maybe he figured it out, went back to the past, and somebody Died came. in the past? Yeah. Wow. They have a picture of it? Um. I don't know what you're trying to find it. What are you doing there? I'm scrolling down the article that you sent me. Oh, all that's about that article? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. This is the article referenced in the comment. Wow. So we know nothing besides the title of this article? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I clicked on it and read it. Uh, I mean, there's... um, (laughs) So basically, this guy created a time machine in 1995. He claimed he did. In 1997, he disappeared. Some people think he did it as a prank, just... Some people think he wanted to get it off, get off the grid, uh-huh. and uh, some people think he, it worked, and and then, he couldn't get back. And then later on, this photo pops up from 1930 of a dead person on the beach. It looks a lot like this guy. So then, and he's the dead guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I think he couldn't get back, and he was outcasted because he's like, I'm from 1995, and they're like, this guy's a lunatic. Yeah. That's all the witches that were killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, here's the blueprints of this guy's time machine. It doesn't look super official. It looks like something horseshoe magnet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to have one of those. It's just a very elementary looking sketch, and then just some arrows pointing at stuff. We got some quartz, granite, positive. I mean, just a bunch of words. Copyright, Mike. <laughs> That's his copyright at the bottom. <laughs> he wrote, Just he his wrote name. <laughs> copyright Mike on the bottom left. Not even the copyright little icon yeah. with the C. He also wrote not to scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the guy's good at building time machines, but not, you know, graphs or whatever. Yeah. Not okay. uh, blueprints. Yeah. He's a bad blueprint guy. Yeah. He's got just wood labeled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope this guy's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's dead. Yeah. yeah. Kevin Green, when Aaron asked, do you ever repeat when shampooing? And Nate said, I don't repeat it, but I sometimes wash my hair a couple of times. <laughs> and everyone just kept on going. May have been the funniest moment on Aaron Land yet. Wow. That Aaron was Land. Good. That was finally, a good episode. Doing some jokes <laughs> over in Aaron Land. 
Uh, L-O, Nate thinks the phrase is dimes worth, and it means 10 cents worth of whatever substance we're talking about. He then goes on to say, I'm putting a full five bucks worth. It's dime-sized Nate, meaning about the size of a dime. Gosh, I love this podcast. Fan for life. I don't I, yeah. I, I'm putting a five full five bucks worth. I don't really. Do you remember talking about shampoo and you said. Oh, you're supposed to put a dimes? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if you knew what it meant or you really thought you just like measuring how much that would be worth and like 10 cents worth. Oh. So when they say a dime's worth, they mean yeah. physically the size of a dime. Yeah, I think that's what I think. Okay. But yeah, five bucks worth is a lot of dimes. But then yeah. you said yeah. five bucks worth and they thought you meant, oh, what you said dime's worth like. <laughs> 10 cents worth of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Which would, would be funny. It would be funny. Yeah. It'd be like a comedy podcast. <laughs> uh, to do something like that. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Mm. That's the idea. Uh, Coley, Coley Escher. Coley Escher. Dusty did a fantastic job at the Palm, uh, Palm Beach Improv this weekend, but I was at the show where audience members kept interrupting with Yee Yee. Oh, I forgot all about Yee Yee. Yeah. It's, oh, man, what a wild show. It's been a while since you guys shared any tidbits about how the sausage is made, so could you share some experiences with Outburst from the audience and how you choose to handle them? Dusty, you incorporated it really well, but I felt bad for the flow of your jokes because it kept happening before your punchline. Well, I mean, I do so many shows that that was a blast to me. Yeah. I was like, I've not, I mean, like I wanted to do yee yee. I can't even do it well. Yee yee. I'm <laughs> hoarse, I feel like, but I used to, I mean, that show was so fun. Like somebody yelled out yee yee. I had never really heard yee yee before. And I just, it felt like every punchline I could work a yee yee in there. Yeah. And the audience loved it. I mean, a couple uh, of times I got interrupted. Uh, by people yelling it out, but I had a blast. So you did it most of the time. Well, after the initial, and then a couple people, I mean, there was one time when I was doing a joke and someone interrupted the joke by doing it, but it it worked. Yeah. I even complimented them on it. I was like, that was a well-timed yee yee. I mean, it was so fun. It was one of the most fun shows I've had in a long time. I mean. So you encouraged more of this during the show. <laughs> I mean, I don't want it to happen all the shows, but yeah, that particular show, I was like, let's keep this going. Yeah, I'm it felt into good. this, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Did, and did someone just yell yee yee and that's how I, it got started? Well, I said, um, I, you know, I got a, some jokes about country music and I was like, I'm a big fan of country music. And some people clapped and cheered and then somebody goes, yee yee. And I guess that's a country thing that people do. Uh, I had not heard it. I'm, a, I'm familiar with yee haw. Yeah. <laughs> but not a lot of yee yee. I've never heard yee yee. And so that's what I talked about, how I didn't really, I wasn't really familiar with yee yee. So, and then I just kept bringing it back. And, I mean, it was a hit. All right. I mean, Coley Escher enjoyed the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Felt bad for me, but don't feel bad for me. We had a great time. Yeah. We had a great time. Yeah. You had, had a, a great time. You got a new merch. Yee. 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 Yee guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trent McNeely. There are a million of these Eminem stories out there because everyone thought there was only one bag that had only one color. They actually distributed a ton of bags with one color only, but it had to be accompanied by a winning notice printed inside the wrapper. Think about it. You could just buy a bunch of bags and take out all the one color and claim you found it otherwise. Very true. That is true. Very true. Didn't think about so that, that helps. Aspect. Oh, Aaron does, not. doesn't agree. No, I don't even believe that these contests are real. Oh, you don't think anyone? No, I remember reading about the Tootsie Roll pop wrapper. If there's a star on it, then you win something, and then that was all fake. I just think these are all these are all urban legends. Yeah, get you to buy the candy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Eminem starts it. I think they're all doing it. Mm -hmm. They start these rumors. They go to playgrounds and they go, "Hey, kids, if it's all green," and then they go home and tell their parents and get no, yourself a golden ticket. There's no there. exactly, exactly, but there's no gold. Like Michael ticket. Scott. I was thinking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> so if you see. Uh, <laughs> Any of, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the office. That that's what you mean, right? Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know it that well. I watched it, yeah, and I enjoyed it. So, if you've seen adults near playground, <laughs> expect them that this, they're starting like a candy. <laughs> right, they work for the candy industry. Yeah, and that's why candy is always affiliated with. Don't go get candy from a stranger. Exactly, because they're starting a fake. They're really just lottery. surveying potential customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in my day. And that's worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> worst case. Either if they're not doing that, then take their candy. <laughs> 
back in my day, we had real Coke bottles, and you had to have like a. a you grew up with glass Coke bottles. Yeah. Oh yeah. The I mean, I can remember them. Old aluminum freezers with the Coke bottle attached to it, the opener attached to it. Yeah, you need a bottle opener, and underneath the the tin thing, they had a contest. Coke is the real thing, and you had to have all four. Real was the tough word to find. Okay. So I think if you got all four, you won like a thousand bucks or something like mm-hmm. that. But there were people that would, I never found it, but the, it was a big thing. It was like one of the first contests like that. And it was real. You know, people that got the I saw, I don't personally, I saw people in the, the newspaper okay. <laughs> who won. So they, yeah. they were probably planted, I'm yeah. sure. They're, they're in cahoots with the. They don't exist. Did you read the newspaper at a young age? I did. Okay. I love how conspiracy oriented you are now, Aaron. <laughs> I mean, this is like I'm talking about when you were a child. You're like, well, in the paper, we read it when I read it. I, it wasn't a lot to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Lebanon Times. Lebanon Democrat. You go out and get it with your coffee, eight year old Brian. <laughs> I was excited. Yeah. I, uh, uh, now the problem with the contest is they've gotten too. The, it's like they have them, but it's like you're scanning phones or they want your email. It's mm-hmm. it's enough that you're like, I'm not doing it. You want it to be as simple as that. Yeah. And then I'll 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 play your game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I won twenty dollars off a Coke bottle cap one time and a guy paid me nineteen dollars for it. But because I was like, I don't want to go through the trouble of ordering the the whatever this is. So I'll lose the dollar. And he got the dollar? Yeah, he wanted to he wanted to do the process. Well, yeah, I think I would have come in at fifteen or something. Yeah, or, you know, he gave me nineteen dollars. I <laughs> yeah. was like, okay, yeah. That's like you know, someone won that billion dollars, the lottery, mm-hmm. and it, I saw, I read that it's like they get four hundred million after taxes, after taking the lump sum and then the taxes. taxes on top of that. That's insane. They get yeah. less than half of it every time someone wins the lottery. The government wins the lottery. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, probably a third because I think it was one point two billion, right? Yeah, I mean that's a good business to be in. It is a good business. a guaranteed lottery winner every time. <laughs> I want some of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it is crazy. That's like you would. I mean, you're, st- and then it's like I won four hundred million. You're like you got you obviously got to be happy with yeah. that because it's crazy. But you're just like you're you're like. But I mean, it's crazy to see that number just drop. It's I want one point two, two billion dollars, and you get four hundred million, four hundred thirty-three million dollars is what you get to walk away with. That's insane. It's wild. Yeah. And everybody's with, and everybody, and the hassle, and, and it's not complaining about it. You still want it, but then the, the hassle. Everybody thinks you're a billionaire. Why is the lump sum so much less than the payouts? Because of the. Well, they don't necessarily have all of that money, first of all. Why? Be- because yeah. it's just they don't have it like liquid where they can just give it to you all at once. But they can pay out that amount over a certain number of years. But it's always beneficial to take the lump sum, even if it's smaller, because of the present value of money. Like Because you can invest it. Yeah. In theory, you can invest, even though the amount is much smaller, you can invest that and you'll have way more than you would by the time those payments got done. Yeah, yeah, plus if you take the payments, then the company's like, listen, we're bankrupt, okay? We can't we can't yeah. make the payments anymore. But that's a big it's the amount. government, though. Yeah, Difference. I mean. What's more stable than the government? I would, oh, I thought, <laughs> I didn't know it was the government. I thought it was, I saw the same thing. I just thought, I picture some gas station going out of business and you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And then they can't write you $10 million every month. And you're like, God. <laughs> The government can't pay you the one point two billion or whatever. I mean, they might have that money somewhere, but yeah. it's going to be tough to scrounge together one point three billion in cash. Well, they shouldn't do the contest then. Yeah, I agree. Yep, no one should get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they should. It, it, they should do it. Where, yeah, because it's like, I mean, if you get that four hundred million. I mean, it's insane. But that's that's what's crazy. You have to live. You have to get. You need it to get to one point two billion to even get to four hundred and thirty million dollars. Yeah. Like yeah. you got to get it way up just to get. Maybe. Yeah, imagine getting four hundred million dollars and still feeling cheated. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like that's how I would feel. 
I'd be like, yeah, sure. I'm a millionaire now, but maybe the government never anticipated it would keep going up that high, and then like, oh crap, can I just write you a check? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the highest it ever been. You don't right? cash it till next week. Yeah, we, we got to move some stuff around. Yeah, yeah. yeah that I mean, person almost- still has the pre-tax amount. I mean, they got that amount. It's just if they're smart, they're going to set aside the difference. Yeah. So they actually have more than that four hundred million. Yeah, but then your life can be ruined if you if mm-hmm. if yeah. you don't if you don't go pay it. It's like yeah, you're done. You're done, and it's over. And you're yeah. Mm. Uh, you know what? Say ber- t- tear up the thing. Yeah, <laughs> you go. one of those you're like not even worth it. I mean, there was a show uh, about how the lot the lottery people would win the lottery and then it would ruin their lives. Yeah, I mean. Like lots of people have their lives ruined after winning. The I'd lottery. imagine if you went four hundred thirty million, you could you'd be all right. I mean, even if you're like, I always think if you got four hundred thirty million, you're like, someone like here's a hundred million. But I'll I never question where this goes. You can't trust anybody anymore. All of a sudden, and and people get into you know they become alcoholics and addicts. And- yeah, yeah. What's hard is yeah, yeah, that and then the. Uh, because you got you almost need, you got to get like a financial guy, but you got to get one that you trust, right. one that knows how to handle that kind of money. Because right. you probably go to your local guy, mm-hmm. and then you're just like you got more money than your local bank has. Yeah, your brother in law pops up who's good with money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, that's why you can't tell anybody. A lot yeah. of family pop up. You tell your spouse, and that's it. That's it, what you have. to That's do. hard. I know it probably is very hard. There was a guy in Michigan, I think, who was a retired. A uh, math teacher, and he figured out how to beat the lottery. It was like one of these new games that, not like, I mean, there's so many different little games out there. This is one of the small ones, and he figured out a, somehow an equation to win. And then he started telling other people, and all these people started doing it. And like finally, the government, I think, figured it out and put a stop to it. But everybody was winning. I oh. think there's a movie coming out with Brian Cranston about it. I saw this on 60 Minutes when I was reading my paper. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, some of my facts may be wrong. Rocking chair, Eleanor. <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> Why would you tell people, you know, just win the money. If you want to help people, win the money, just give them some. Yeah, but then you're going to tell them because then they have the money. Yeah. If you just pop over, here's a million dollars yeah. cash. Did you win that lottery? No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've always Found had it. this money. <laughs> I've always had it. Rich uncle died. Yeah. Left me a lot. How much did you give you? Four hundred thirty-three million dollars. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the amount that the one? Oh, was it? I don't know. I'd love to meet that guy so I could talk to a person as wealthy as me. Maybe we could share ideas. I yeah, you got to like grab who you want to grab, tell them, and then go build a fence around your. Yeah, yeah. Get off the grid quick. Get off the grid quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott Donnelly. Quick, yeah, quick note about yay or nay and a or nay. I'm pretty sure when the votes are tallied or they vote by walking up and putting their vote in, it's yay or nay. If it's a vocal vote, they have their name called and shout out a or nay. A or nay. I. I. The A or nay is I. Dead coming. I or nay? Yeah, I looked this up. That's true. This the Senate. God, how stupid would you feel? <laughs> I, this is why. I, I would be so and Nate Bargatze. A because <laughs> you'd be first because your name. Yeah. yeah, I would be right at it. We're good to go. Hey, hey, you'd be high fiving. Boom, and they Ay-ya. go. We got uh, four eyes, a hundred nays, and one a. <laughs> and they don't know what to do. Um, I looked this up. The Senate does it all the same, but the House of Representatives. Does it like he said? If it's a vocal, it's I or nay. All right, all right. So now we know. Now we know. Dusty Crane, Dustin Crane, U.S. Marshals update. <coughs> Kentucky is swampier than you might think. There's a 450 acre swampland in Kentucky along the Ohio River, which is where the plane crashes in the movie. Axe Lake Swamp State, State, Axe Lake Swamp State Nature Preserve. Whew. It's part of a project to protect 3,000 acres of swampland in Kentucky. So there is a swamp. I, well, I would imagine you should point that out maybe more. Maybe they did, and I didn't pay attention. 
That's a mouthful of a name, though, right? Axe, Axe Lake Swamp, Swamp State. Dang. Nature Preserve. I yeah. feel like you owe Hollywood an apology. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> I mean it's it's. I would like more exam. You know, be like, I I know what you're thinking. Maybe they did say that. I would I would imagine I'd have a line in there going, "How does Kentucky have swamps? <laughs> <laughs> just one guy, swamps in, in Kentucky? Kentucky? They go, they go, yeah. Just one part of area, and we ran and they randomly hit it for this movie, <laughs> and then you'd move on." <laughs> I would want you to do that. I mean, that was a good line. If you were reading for that role, I would I would hire mm-hmm. you. Thanks, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scott Reed. Filming of the swamp scene in U.S. Marshals took place in Obion County by the shallow real foot lake in northwest Tennessee. So it was in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. The two states you said had no swamps. <laughs> we have swamps. Well, I'm going to go to our swamps. <clears throat> Obion County. Um, yeah, real foot lake is... Pretty great. It was, that doesn't seem like a swamp, though. That just seems like a lake. Well, I think it's pretty big, and there's some swamp areas. Yeah, what's the swamp area? Like a tree grows in a lake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that, yeah. Well, I don't know what the technical definition of a swamp is. Yeah, I don't know. But it's just, just a, kind of feels. You just feel it out. I feel like, why is that tree way out there? Yeah. But cause we're in a I always thought there. a swamp would be like a lot of trees, and then there's almost like a moss mm-hmm. layer over the water. Some mm-hmm. Dirty water. Yeah. I was. I mean, if alligator's not there, I don't. You don't consider it a real swamp? Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. You need, some, you need some alligators. Yeah, this, yeah. this is maybe a little bit marshy, but this is marshy. Give me some alligators, yeah. some piranhas. I don't know if they're in swamp. You can go <laughs> walk. I want, yeah. that. I want piranhas in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that just gives it the real danger feel that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, All right. Summer nights are here. So get outside in your swamp and enjoy your solo stove. Ooh. Solo stove would be good to take if you got lost in the swamp. Oh, yeah. Take a camp into the lake or have your neighbors over for s'mores and a nice hang. They have small sizes or larger sizes. The solo stove is the best fire pit I've ever seen. Not uh, Again, I always say not to smell like a campfire is uh, my favorite. Usually after a bonfire, you have to shower off the smell. Not with solo stove. No setup. Unbox and enjoy a little fire starter wood, and you can have a nice fire quickly. We have the bonfire version <coughs> with the stand. It burns down to white ash, so cleanup is super easy. Solo stove fire pits are brilliant, brilliantly engineered, made with a premium grade 304 stainless steel and a 360 degree airflow system. How I mean, how do they make that smoke go away? That's what's crazy. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't blow on you and you smell like it. That's everything. Yeah. That's such a big thing. That's the main thing. So go try it out with your solo stove. Right now you can get big discounts on all fire pits during Solo Stove's summer sale and use promo code Nate at solostove.com for an extra $10 off. That is solostove.com, promo code Nate for $10 off on top of their incredible summer sale discounts. The smoke is tough, though. If you put a, <clears throat> like a brush fire on a hot day and then yeah. the smoke gets on your clothes and then it feels like you can't breathe and like you're having it's a, a lot. heat stroke. Yeah, no it's smoke is great. I agree. All right. Guys, um, I have a problem. I, I've never been addicted to anything, not drugs, not alcohol. Dusty can confirm no cigarette or c- cigars. That's true. I'm, I think I might be addicted to athletic greens. Yeah. I have to have it every morning. I had it again when I got here today. <laughs> I love athletic greens. It's so easy. Get up. Um, there's a taste that you just kind of crave and it's, it's, it's good. It's so easy to make just one scoop, you pour it in, you shake it up, you're ready to go. And I just sit there and. Read my paper, watch 60 Minutes. Quality some, addiction. Yeah. Some athletic greens. Yeah, it's That's great for addiction. you. So it's a good addiction yeah. to have. It is a good addiction to have. It's easy to make. It's great. One scoop of powder, water, shake, and drink. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And we all know that that's where I'm getting to. But mm-hmm. this is helping. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Oh, that was awesome. Guys, <laughs> I have an addiction. 
I'm addicted to Indeed.com. Let me tell you that. Most people think that finding great talent is harder than avoiding a bear. But with Indeed, it's as easy as being Barry Sanders. Ooh. Ooh. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Here's why. It is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Stop doing it in a bunch of different places. Do it all in one. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites, Indeed is a powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. One of the things I love about Indeed, like I said, is you can do it all in one spot. I've done the hiring there. I've been hired from there. I've done interviews through it. It's a nice service. You need to do it now. Start hiring with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Nate. Indeed.com slash Nate. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. <laughs> the pause again. That's great. Yeah, he's good. good. He's, he's good. good. He's the best. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Mm. They're still working out there, and <laughs> what? Uh, so this week, what were we talking about? Today, uh, we're talking about collectibles and memorabilia. Mm. Um, and the reason this week, last Thursday, the uh, Hannes Wagner baseball card was sold at auction. The most expensive card ever sold sold wow. for seven point two five million dollars. Well, what's this card? Maybe I got that card at home. Hannes uh, Hannes Wagner. I, I seriously doubt it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but maybe a fake one. Yeah, there's a so. there, this there's everybody has this card at home, but no one no one has this card at home. The real one. The real one. So the reason this card I made a bunch of extra. This is like the ultimate card. The reason it's so valuable is because there was only like 200 ever made. It was made by the American Tobacco Company, and then Hannes Wagner said, "I don't want to encourage children to buy cigarettes because of my image." So they stopped production. So there's only about 200 made. Now they think there's maybe 50 left in circulation. So if you have one that's in good condition, it's going to go for a few million dollars. It's not the only one that's done that, but this is the most expensive one yet. Even in very bad condition. It would be a ton of money. Is he more famous from the card than baseball? I think so. These days, yeah. And he was a great player. He was? Yeah. Like he was like an all-star. He was a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Okay. I think he was one of the first, when they started the Hall of Fame, they had an initial batch of... Like the best players ever, he was one of them. Mm-hmm. Ty Cobb. Babe Ruth. Yeah. Ty Cobb's a great name. It is. It's a really good name. Better than Honus? Uh, they're all good names. Babe Ruth's a good name. Uh, what was Babe Ruth's real name? Uh, Herman. George Herman Ruth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, Babe I Ruth. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. You thought his name was Baby? Just Babe. Okay. Honus <laughs> Wagner. <laughs> I like Ty Cobb more than Honus Wagner. Cobb Salad's named after him. Oh, really? I think. There's an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm where they talk about that, I think. Hmm. I'm sure. But I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> yeah. Honus is fun, though. They don't hear, <clears throat> you don't hear a lot of Honuses out there. No, not no. anymore. Yeah. I, I, I never heard the name. If you say Honus, all you think about is Wagner. Yeah, he's the only one. He's the only one. The Flying Dutchman. That was his nickname. Oh, okay. So this T206 Honus Wagner sold for $7 million, you said? Yeah, there was one that sold last year for $6.6 million, and it had a great... Inflation. Well, it had a grade three on this grading scale. This one that sold last week had a grade two, so it was in worse condition, but it just keeps going up. Every time they sell, they go up in value. Mm-hmm. So if you can afford to buy one and hold on to it for a few years, you're probably going to make some money. Wow. It's like almost guaranteed to make money. The baseball card market 2020 went insane because so many of these people, 2020, you got nothing going on. I'm going to get back into these hobbies. What right? happened in 2020? Your special uh, came out? Yeah. Uh, no. Did, but are they, is it the old or new cards? Mostly old. There are some new ones that are now valuable. I was in the golden age of bad baseball cards when it was oversaturated, the 80s and where there was just so many sold that what a 90s model Don Russ. What do you think that's going for these days? A uh, what? Don Russ. You remember? Oh, Don Russ? Yeah. What year? I thought you said like a guy's name, like Don Russ. No, I, I thought a, it was Don Russ. Yeah. What is I used to have a whole collection of Don Russ cards. 
I don't know. I don't even know what's really You're happening. You're saying right it now. like it's a player named yeah. Don Russ. Russ. Oh, no, it's, it's a. It's D O N R U S S is a brand. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. A brand of card. I had a whole bunch of them, a bunch of Don Russes. There's tops. It does of- seem, I guess, Don and then Russ. <laughs> it, it does probably flows together better yeah. than what I'm saying. Don Russ. Tops Don is Russ. the main Don one Russ. that most people think about. There was Don Russ or Don Russ and Fleer. I know Top and Fleer. I've never oh, heard of Don Fleer. Russ. Yeah, I had some Fleer. <laughs> you didn't want to go with the main one, right? You, I had no idea. You're off the grid. Don Russ doesn't have licensing agreements with uh, baseball anymore. So when you buy a Don Russ card now, they're not going to have the actual team name on there. Mm. The the players will be positioned in such a way where you can't see the logo on their jersey because they don't have mm. licensing rights. And Tops actually just lost licensing rights. Wow. So Fleer's um, racking up then. Fleer has not been a thing for quite some time. All right. But so no one has licensed right. It's Fanatics. Yeah. I think Fanatics bought Tops and and uh so in the next year or so it's going to be completely different than it is now. So Tops does have licensed rights F- at the moment, but they've lost it for the next for the next year. But then that those people bought that company. Yeah, I think it's more complicated than I'm saying it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing what you're laying down. <laughs> I smell what you're stepping in. <laughs> All right, so this is the most valuable card. But oh later God. this month, there's an auction for a 1952 Mickey Mantle, which is also incredibly rare. Another great name. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey Mantle. And they think this one could go for $10 million. Wow. Um, it's also very rare. A guy, uh, the owner is a 75-year-old New Jersey waste management entrepreneur, so the mafia, and he's had the card for over 30 years, and he bought it in 1991 for $50,000. And they think it will sell for could sell for two, $10 million later this month. So you got to hold on to it for 30 years. <laughs> well, in this it's case, to really. And I was joking about him being the mafia. Just New Jersey <laughs> well, waste management. I think people is. took it serious. Yeah. I mean, I, I got. <laughs> I didn't want him to be a folk and like. Yeah, I'm sure listen, I had some <laughs> words with my trash company, and, and I was afraid for a little while. <laughs> when? Uh, well, not long ago. <laughs> yeah, they just were not coming on time. You know, I think you that was all in Nashville. So, uh, yeah. So I'm like, I was worried for a minute. I was like, like a day, you, like you tell the time, like is the day or like the yeah, you know, like the day, like yeah. they would skip a week, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, why? Well, and they're like, well, we'll give you a refund on that week, and I'm like, well, that's you know, fifteen dollars. I really just need you to come pick up the trash. I don't need you to just skip the week and be like, we'll give you the money. What did they back. say? They they were like, what? Well, there's nothing we can do. Oh, you pay for trash pickup? Yeah. I thought that was just a Metro service. Metro Nashville service. Hmm. I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah, I pay for trash too. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Have you been slipping through the cracks? <laughs> yeah. No, I, mean, I guess my wife pays it, but <laughs> yeah, I think that's what's happening. There yeah. was weeks where I thought that was like Metro Public yeah. Waste or something that they was part of our taxes. Yeah. I thought our taxes paid. Y'all for pay it. for oh, electricity, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all getting yeah. scammed out here. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's well, crazy? You got to pay taxes, and then they also charge you. <laughs> it is true. Why would the, are the taxes not for that? I guess. Yeah, I guess they're earmarked for other things. It should all just be lumped into one. I pay taxes, then I get all the stuff for free. Yeah, like an HOA. Like an HOA. I don't know. My HOA doesn't – I don't know what they're doing either. I don't know what kind of services they're bringing us either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just drive around the neighborhood going, ah, I pay what, that. Uh, when you went out and talked to them, did you – what would you do? You waited? You had to watch – The wait. HOA? No, the trash. Oh, I called them. Oh, 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 no. oh I, I don't confront the guys on the street. I mean, oh, that that's guy, what I was hoping. Oh, no, no. There's a guy that pulls up and he has a mullet. He has a really long mullet, kind of <laughs> shaved sides. He's older. Always has a black and mild that he's not smoking. Oh, wow. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm not confronting that guy. You respect him too much. No, well. Seems I'm, like a guy no, you'd love. Well, I mean, no, I'm, that's what I'm saying, though. I'm not going to yeah. get into it with that guy. I do love him, <laughs> but yeah, if I go confronting him, that love will go away quick. And right. He'll be into a fight out there in the street. Yeah. And I feel like he would And win. if you and him got in a fight, would it be hard to tell who's the trash man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if someone comes breaking up. <laughs> they come breaking up. Get back in the truck. They shove you in the truck. You back in the house. And that guy lives there now. Yeah. They can't tell. He goes, I don't, I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is true. I mean, even the other trash guys might even be confused. Yeah. I think didn't trash men used to be 
ripped because they had to pick up those trash cans with their hands. I imagine they used to be like, look like Vikings, you know? They, yeah. And now it's all machine, you know? The- well, now they get out because you don't, you, you gotta, you gotta put it like, you know, like ours is a cul de sac. So you always, like, it's like, I'm trying to put it in the best way. I'll watch them just to see, did I get it where yeah. it's easy for them to get? But it's a lot of beam, beam, backing up and trying to grab it. They I don't really need to be out of the out of the vehicle anymore, right? Uh, I mean, cul de sacs, they get to be out of the vehicle, I think, now enough that it's a super annoying. Like, it's, okay. if it doesn't, if you can't get it, you're like, oh. Yeah, there's one trash service that comes to our neighborhood that will pick up with the claw yeah. and dump it. And then there's another one where they have to get off the back of the truck and then pull the trash can around to the back, and then it'll give it a lift in there. Yeah. But two guys chilling on the back, yeah. just hanging out. Yeah. yeah, that's how I remember Still it. the classic hanging on the back. That's fun. Yeah. I like that. Like a caboose on a train. You remember yeah. those? There used to be a guy out there waving. <laughs> Gone now. They don't even do No cabooses. Caboose. No, just the end of the train. <laughs> Wait for that whole thing, and you don't even get a reward. Why would they have a caboose? Yeah, I remember. I remember waiting. I think I remember cabooses going away because I remember seeing them, and you wait for them, and then you start waiting. You're like, eh, I didn't see one that time. Yeah, wouldn't there used just to be a guy on the back waving at you? Wouldn't just the last one be the caboose? Yeah, but it's like a freight train. It was like red. you want it to be. Yeah. I think there's still caboose. <clears throat> like they have to let you know when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I thought too, but now it just ends. Yeah, I haven't seen a caboose. It, and you're like, time. I don't know if it's over or not. Yeah, <laughs> this is might be a dumb question. I I thought the caboose was just what you called the last card on the train. I picture it being red and yeah, it had a, so smaller. It's a whole different thing. Had a whole different thing. Kind of like a little porch on the back of it. You know what I mean? Like where a guy could stand. Yeah. Mm. Look up. Are there still cabooses? <laughs> I think they're. I I think there still could be cabooses. I I think you don't have to have a caboose now, but I think you know. Let's go to worldwiderails.com. Oh, they are not you longer, no longer used on mainline <coughs> trains. In the early 80s, it was replaced on mainline trains. Well, in Alabama, we still had them up until the early 90s. <laughs> we'll move a little slower down yeah, here. Yeah, we were still. I think on. trains in general seem just such a throwback. Like, where are they going? They all look like they're on their last. Leg. I think they're, I, I, I think trains are, I think trains are getting more popular. Really? Well, you got to think you're going to use it if, you know, they're having trains now. They want you to use public transportation and all that stuff. It's going to be like in that aspect. I use oh, I didn't mean st- passenger train. I meant like hauling like stuff. That's how they get everything everywhere. I just feel like nowadays you got UPS, Amazon. Yeah, but you got to fly big. St- you t- what are you talking about, for you or for like companies? I guess I don't know what is on a train, but when I see one go by, I'm like, I, what I are mean, they hauling? You got to haul so much stuff. You can haul so much more stuff than on a plane. Yeah, like a lot of rocks and coal. That's like truck. Trucks are stuff. going like crazy because there's so much stuff that has to be on it. Mm. I would like an Amazon train car where a guy's just out there throwing gifts out. You know, like, like the Mardi Gras, Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. I just think it'd be fun. I mean, someone from the 1800s came to our time and they're like, back in our day, we had trains. And we're like, well, yeah, we still have those. I mean, they're essentially the same. They haven't changed a lot. I guess the caboose. Mm-hmm. Caboose is gone. I took Seattle. I was just there and I, I took their, they just got new public transportation. They got a light rail train running through the city. It was awesome. I got everywhere in like 10 minutes for two bucks. Wow. I had to ride with the guy that yelled at me. <laughs> they didn't have trains back then when I went. <laughs> he picked you up. Yeah. He took you back to the airport, too? I don't remember who took me back. Uh, Was there a bunch of people in the up. car, and you're like, could we not have so many people in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I would uh, like some of those people to be in the car and have a little different conversation going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are uh, there's three grading companies that grade these baseball cards, and they do it on a scale from 1 to 10. <clears throat> they look at basically four things. Centering, meaning if it's centered properly, like when they cut it up, corners, edges, and surface. And then they grade it on a scale from one to ten. Uh, you but, got some? So, yeah, I've got some PSAs. I've got some Beckett's there. The oh, Beckett will actually. I remember Beckett. Beckett will actually break down how it's scored in each of those individual categories. Yeah, that's, yeah corners nine, surface nine and a half, centering nine, edges. I got nine. one from your era here. Brian, here's a 1969 tops. Jeff Bill McCool. Uh, Samarja. Jeff Samarja. Samarja. I played at Notre Dame. He was a wide receiver at Notre Dame, but he played for professional baseball yeah. mm. for the Cubs and then the Giants. 
And uh, still playing? No, he retired. Oh, I okay. have Dikembe Mutombo, who's now doing commercials where he's slapping groceries out of people's <laughs> yeah. hands and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's his rookie card. So if they're, but so if it's centered though, that's like on the company, right? It's on the company. Some of it's not your fault. Yeah. A lot of it's just the luck of the draw. Because yeah. when yeah. they cut them from the big sheet, sometimes you'll just get like look at this one, this uh, Dick Bossman. That's, a that's good from the Washington too. Center. <laughs> that's a that's a great. See the centering's guess. way off on that, and that's not whoever found that card's fault because he's not centered. What do you mean? Is that what you mean? Like yeah. he's not in the middle? No, look at the black border around the edge there. Oh. There's like nothing on the right. That's that just the way, way it was cut. I was looking at him. Oh, like the image center. Yeah. Yeah. Like I thought. So like half these cards, they don't work because the guy didn't go scoot a little bit to the right, please. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, like, error cards. You go, All right, Dick Bossman, you just ruined <laughs> dead gummit, man. He's could you just do a normal pose in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> and there's like the one you just freeze. see like the like back half of the guy's running away and you're like we didn't even get a chance to get him in the middle and do you mail these in or how do you get these graded so in 2020 there became such a huge backlog with psa that you had to pay four or five hundred dollars to get one card expedited and the, and people weren't getting their cards back for like 18 months mm. two years because they were just so backlogged so I've never submitted a card myself there. You just buy them after the fact. Oh, so you didn't have these. You bought them Yeah, these graded. were cards that I got after they'd already been graded and stuff. Now, this is a good example of why you need these grading companies. This is before I knew what I was doing. This is a Ronald Acuna Gem Mint 10 rookie card. But this is, I don't even know what grading company that is. That's just uh, that's something you sell to an idiot, which is what I bought. Oh, because they're saying this card's a 10. Yeah, but but that company it means nothing from that particular yeah. grading company. You Probably can't a, just get it graded again. Well, that's I bought that after it was already graded in that slab because I thought, oh, a ten, a ten Ronald Acuna car, it's gonna be worth millions. I got it for like eighteen dollars. When are you planning this <clears throat> to be worth millions? Um, I don't think any of the cards I have will be worth yeah. millions. A lot of these <clears throat> I collect. A, I like Jeff Samarja. And mm-hmm. I like funny names. I like old, old school, cool names. Yeah, you know, I, I just got, like having them. I got some NASCAR cards. Um, I wonder where you could find get those graded. I have a a, a Dick Trickle NASCAR, and that which I always thought was the funniest name in all of NASCAR. You, you can know, Google yeah. and get a an estimate. Oh, These are from my era. Oh yeah, yeah. dang. <laughs> so here's how I collected. <laughs> That's how I collected too. Yeah. In these books, did no one you didn't collect like this? I did when I was a kid, yeah. Yeah. But I was told if you bought a com- first trapper keeper, a complete set, never open, that they're worth more. So this is from the complete set tops 1987. My mom wrote on here value 19, I guess that's what we pay, $20. And I looked it up last night and it's now worth $25. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> is it because so you opened So you it. opened it. You opened it last night? Well, I did it as a kid, but Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole. I, I like, know I couldn't help it. I was just yeah. too into it. But yeah. that was the it's point. Funny too, they'd be like, but they're all in mint condition. What if they're like, this is worth a hundred grand unopened, and they go, the only problem is your mom wrote the price, <laughs> yeah. and that's not good. Like you, know, you didn't think about like, doing that. These are all mint condition because they've never been taken have out. You looked at them. I pulled a few out just to- so they have been taken out. Uh, <laughs> Zane Smith, I remember him. Yeah, for the Braves. Braves. Yeah. I, I mean, again, I haven't had any graded. I looked last night just online Googling my cards. Yeah. Most of them are worth nothing. I got a few that are worth double digits. One I told you guys about previously, a Roger Maris rookie card that's worth a few hundred. Wow. Um, but you got nothing. that when you got drafted. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> he was two years behind me in high school. Yeah. So, But I've got a ton of like you know rookie cards from Ricky Henderson, Daryl Strawberry. Oh, that's awesome. People like that. I mean, I was so into baseball cards. I was too. I texted your mom and I said, did your kids collect anything growing up? She's like, baseball cards. She said, Derek had some Batman memorabilia yeah. and Abby did Beanie Babies. Yes. And uh, do you still have your baseball cards? I don't know. Dude, I, I, she would, I guess my mom would know. I don't know if I have them. I don't think I have them. I asked if, she, if y'all still had them. She said she thinks the kids got the Batman toys and did something with them. She said the 
the other stuff is at your individual houses. So she thinks they're here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you might have a Honus Wagner. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a Honus Wagner. <laughs> Abigail got these beanie babies. I remember when that became a, a big thing. And my parents would buy. They thought these were going to be worth money. Your mom said this is supposed to be her college fund. Yeah. And Abby told me that your dad, every time he would go on the road, he would buy one and come back and bring it to her. Mm -hmm. And she said the tag, which I think it says, was it say tie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to leave them on. That's or that's kind of like don't open the box. They're worth more with the tag on them. This even got a special tag on it. Yeah, yeah. they were a big but, deal. I mean, I remember it was a whole yeah, thing. I mean, this was and a we phenomenon. had so many of them. A yeah, Beanie Baby. There was a, a couple that got divorced. There was a thing on Instagram where they had got divorced and they were like dividing up their Beanie Babies in court. Here's the picture right there. These are grown people. <laughs> this is, you're getting. And like, they're it, choosing which ones to do. It looks like it's me like, from like 20 years ago. It's like while they're doing that, you're like, oh, I know why you're getting divorced. Because you guys are. This does look like you a yeah. bit, Brian. <laughs> that might have been me. And and, and, the, and the judge has to watch that. A time traveler. Be, yeah. yeah. You got to make sure it's fair. Yeah, they're divvying up big assets. You know, these could be worth potentially millions of dollars a piece. Beanie Babies never became anything. I thought, weren't some of them pretty valuable? There's some now that. Is uh, that like a Princess Die Beanie Baby? That's or? what your sister's talking about. She earlier. said she has a Princess Die that she yeah. didn't bring. She said that camel there is a knockoff Beanie Baby. Um, so she got <laughs> that on the black market. On this yeah. But those this bears. Doesn't have eyes. Dang. I mean, I looked up the most expensive Beanie Babies. There's some rare ones that, and she's got a huge crate down there that are worth a lot of, I mean, a few hundred dollars. Oh, really? Yeah. I think on average, some of them are like $400. Wow. This is the devil here. I think it's supposed to be a So bull. each one's worth $400? Or? I, th I think on average, I think most of them are worth nothing, but I think there's some that are so expensive that it averages out to like 400 mm -hmm. um, it, it, Well, it says a collection. Oh, it's Furbies. Furbies is another thing. Um, there's some that came from McDonald's. I guess McDonald's gave away Beanie Babies back yeah. in the day. And some of those are so rare that they're worth, on average, $400. Wow. This is a McDonald's one, she said. I mean, I think, like, the idea of, a, like, collect... I like the idea of collecting stuff. I, I guess it's... I, I, see, I see the idea of it. It's fun when I was a kid, mm. trading baseball cards. But it's like, that's what it was about. It was about trading the cards and stuff like that. Uh, and I guess I never attached the money to it as much as, like... I wanted that person mm -hmm. for whatever reason. We used to have the Beckett magazines like in, in, in school. Yeah. And we would always be looking up what cards were worth. Yeah. I mean, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I did. I, so I, maybe I did do that. I yeah. do remember that. Actually. But it was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you really think you were making some investment, but you were like, oh, this card's worth 10 bucks and I bought it for a dollar. Yeah. I got it in a pack with some. Well, you were trying to get those cards that were, but like, how many, could, how many do I have to give you to get that? Mm -hmm. Remember, sometimes they would have a little piece of gum in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Be oh, a, still, be still, still get old packs with the gum still in there. I would eat it too. Yeah, yeah I would too. you got to try would it once. It yeah, I had a piece of gum from like nineteen eighty two or eighty three. Wonder recently. if the gum's it's worth not good. Money. Just the you gum. Save the gum. I mean, it's worth money now. Well, before my time, they, they would put joke. baseball cards in spokes of bicycles because it would make a sound. And that's why these old, like, Mickey Mantles are so rare that there's any good condition because they would just get tore up. You've never heard that? Uh, yeah, but that's so funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> just the visual. There's a little Brian out there with his baseball I said before ball. my time, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> Schwinn. Yeah. I used to collect comic books. That's what I had as a kid. And when I moved, I took, I had two big Tupperware, big Rubbermaid boxes of comic, comic books. I took them to this comic book store to see if I could get some money for it. The guy flipped through them. He goes, nah, these ain't worth nothing. And I was like, but can I just leave them with you? <laughs> <laughs> They're worth, if you let me walk out of here, then I got a great deal. What kind yeah. did you have? Did he take them? Yes. Yeah. You know, I had some X-Men. I, I like Punisher. That was the comic I liked. I had... I had like a whole set of Punisher that I really had like number one, two, you know, all the way, you know how it goes. And uh, <laughs> I thought that would be worth something. It could be. Four. I don't know. I still have the cards. I got a lot of comic cards. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, <clears throat> my poor mom, you know, we lived in a trailer. She was buying me comic books every week and uh, I just give them away in a store. You think that's but, why y'all stayed in a trailer? Yeah. I mean, I don't <laughs> I don't know. I'm joking. 
I mean, it didn't help. You know what I mean? My mom was investing in the future of comic books. Well, we invest in Beanie Babies. So. Yeah. Well, comic books, there's a the record comic book just sold. So last year, uh, the Superman, the first one that he appeared in, sold for uh, $2.6 million. Then later the year, the first Spider-Man sold for $3.6 million. But those are the ones that were even valuable when I was a kid. Yeah. That, were, that was the reason we were all collecting them. Because yeah. my mom was like, oh, I had that one when I was a kid. If I had it, we'd be rich. Well, a different Superman just passed Spider-Man, 5.3 million. Wow. So, um, so it keeps going up. But the Supermans are by far the most. I don't I, feel like anybody that gets that money is someone that needs that money either. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's right. a guy that, you know, I mean. It's, it's an investor. It's an investor that's like, we paid 200 grand for it. Now it's worth 500 grand and then it's worth this. Yeah. They're always anonymous, usually, the buyer and seller. Yeah, or it's a way to hide blood money and bad money and move money around. That's a bit shady extreme. Ways. Wow. That seems extreme. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I mean? I mean, let's say I had $50 million of money that I acquired through uh, bad, so I did things. bad things to get them. Yeah. yeah. And I need to move that money around. Yeah. I can just, let me just buy some artwork. You're very conspiracy oriented mm. today. And I'm, well, you're I'm rubbing getting, off. You, you two are rubbing off yeah. on How me, does, man. I always think when people sell art and stuff, how do they even find, how do you find a buyer? If you stole art. Oh, stole. I don't know. I mean, we've talked about the Mona Lisa, how yeah. it was stolen. And then it set for years, I think, because we talked about what you, how are you going to do it? And then finally someone found it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find someone in another country. Yeah. Or someone that, yeah, lives like one of these guys. They don't care if you know they stole it. Yeah. You know, they got a pet tiger that will protect it. Now, there are cases with <laughs> I found with baseball cards and comic books. Someone died. The f- kids are cleaning out the attic and they find a Hannes Wagner, a Superman original worth millions. And then they sell it at auction. Like my brother-in-law has all this Dale Earnhardt memorabilia. And it's like. I feel like he's the kind of guy that if it were worth a lot of money, he would still be like, nah. Like, he would keep it just because he loves Dale Earnhardt. Do you know what I mean? Like, even if it were valuable right. and he could pay his mortgage off, he's like, nah, I like this car. Does it have sentimental value to him, too? Maybe. But okay. he just likes... He just likes Dale Earnhardt that yeah. much. Yeah. There's, like, Nicolas Cage is such a big... Uh, superhero fan he had a huge comic book collection he had the original superman he sold for two million dollars his last name cage it comes from luke cage who's a marvel character and his son he named his son kal-el which is superman's name on krypton so he has one of the biggest or at least used to have one of the biggest comic book collections of anybody wow i that's uh yeah i i like the idea of collecting stuff but i don't know if i have the uh, the real like the hobby of it, I don't know. I think I would just get. It's like I, I don't think it ever stuck with hotel me. keys. Keep those. Yeah, but it's the like yeah. It's something that I don't know if I you know the idea of trading or something. I don't. You yeah. Know. Well, let's go. I don't bigger. like the idea of taking advantage of some like either. What do you mean? Like trading can be very. You feel like you're just ripping. Someone's getting. Oh, you got to be ethical about it. You got to make sure it's a fair trade. Yeah. You have because um, news old newspapers can be worth something. And you have, didn't you say you have the 911? I have the 912. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. About the, about the, that'd be amazing if you had the. I had the September 10th where they called it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Uh, That would be worth a lot. I bought the September 12th one. That was one that I did buy. You still have uh, it? Yeah. Yeah. And I was trying to think, did I buy it? Because I thought it's funny to be here now. Because, I, I mean, maybe I thought it could be worth some, but I think I also thought, like, we have kids, like... Yeah, this show kids, them. Yeah. yeah, show them. So you recognized even that day, like, the significance the of The day it. after. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just seeing that newspaper and being, like, buying a couple and being, like, this is, like, a headline, like, Pearl Harbor. Like, we just went we went to Pearl Harbor, and they sell newspaper. You know, that they, they're just... Replicas of it. Replicas mm-hmm. of the, the that next day. And it's it's kind of weird. It's crazy because you want to see it. You want to see what was the other stuff about, what was going on. Yeah, yeah there are a few iconic ones. I can think man lands on moon. Mm-hmm. You think of that. I would keep sports sections from the Tennessean as a kid if it was some big sport event. <laughs> and years later, I went back and looked. What I thought were huge, like, it would be like... 
Martina Nadralova wins Wimbledon, which, I mean, every year somebody's going to win Wimbledon. <laughs> Barry Goheen hits shot at the buzzer to beat George. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of just Vanderbilt stuff that I was so excited You're about. Like, Here we go. Yeah, and I thought this is going to be worth a lot of money someday. But obviously it was just ridiculous. And then now with Barry the internet. Barry Goheen might buy it off of you. It's like yeah. you can just find those things on the internet. Right, like not not even like if you want to buy the physical copy, but you can just see a picture of it on the internet, right? So, but like there was a time when when the and the internet didn't exist, so the only evidence for it was that thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like now I don't know. It just feels like all that stuff doesn't mean. But the fun, is, right? The fun is having it. The fun is thinking, right? But the, what this was the fun for sure. But the value, it's like it just it's like it would be like a hidden gem that no one would even know about now it feels like nothing's like hidden or lost Mm -hmm. yeah you can find yeah well that yeah that's like the nf like an nft or something like that i mean i guess that's a new collectible that's true but i like to collect dvds that i think they're gonna ban (laughs) (laughs) because i'm like when i can't find this streaming anymore i want to watch this movie. yeah (laughs) but you got a bunch i got some i got fugitive Yeah, well, I don't uh, have the Fugitive. I should get that. Fugitive but. 2? It's harder I to find. I should check the Fugitive <laughs> 2 out. Yeah. I even forgot what that movie was we talked about. but U.S. Marshals. Yeah, yeah, blew my mind. Well, sports memorabilia is a huge thing, too, and autographs. The most expensive autograph going right now is anything signed by Kobe Bryant. Oh, yeah. Um, I read one place where stuff's going on average for $17,000 if Kobe signed it. But then when I Googled try to find something, I couldn't find anything close to that. But it had Kobe by far the most, Jordan second, and Babe Ruth third, as far as autograph memorabilia. I would the Kobe thing is I mean, maybe it is if you know it's legit. Mm. Yeah, like legit autograph. Jay yeah. Cutler photo fourth. If you have an autograph, Jay Cutler. Oh, nice. <laughs> and he confirmed it. <laughs> yeah, on our podcast, on that, our that, podcast. that was his signature. You can like people sell everything online. If you went on eBay or some of these sites and look for a Nate Bargatze. Uh, there's stuff out there. Oh, really? I I may or may not have been the person who puts it on on sale. Yeah, but, <laughs> but all right, here we go, right there. Anything. Oh, someone's selling the lanyard. The meet and greet pass from your rain check tour, ten dollars. With the rain check tour still going on, huh? Yeah, I mean, you would, <laughs> if you yeah, want a free yeah, meet and greet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not even memorabilia. They're like trying to get a meet and greet here. <laughs> I've got one. Does it say anything else about? Where it came from or who the seller is? Because I've got the, uh, what was the one before that with the coffee cup? Oh, yeah. I could the, sell that for a ton. Yeah. Might just get, but there's a lot. I actually did look. There's a lot of Nate Bargatze stuff on there. Like there's an autographed picture. Hand signed 8 by 10 Is that an authentic Still there. Nate? Yeah. What's that one going for? I think That's, it was $10, wasn't it? Yeah. This one, eight, and there's another eight by ten signed at the seller. Oh, it looks like a homeless pimp picture. It is from the seller. That's in Spanish or something. And we got oh, this is cool. The greatest average American poster going not for seventeen dollars. All right, that's not bad. Something that's, that's not yeah, bad at all. There, still there, still available. Now. Yeah, in stock, multiple multiple stocks. <laughs> So you don't have to be, I mean, there's comedians, anything people can get autographed. And that's why we've talked about this. Some of these professional autograph seekers, they're doing it to sell it. Mm-hmm. It's not for kids. It's not. Yeah, that's a weird, because like, uh, I saw yeah. him with like, I was still with like uh, yeah. Sal yeah. when we were with Impractical Jokers. Uh, well, I was with you one night. Um, we just made that, Laura made that and gave the magnet set that we did you we gave that away we just give it away <laughs> now they're selling it for now they're selling it, yeah. 15 bucks on ebay yeah. that's why you can't give people things you give somebody something they go try to sell it mm. like I, I i worked uh my buddy and i worked at tmz and we i was walking around with him once in new york city and we went to try to catch somebody on a late night show and all of these autograph people are just showing up and they like know each other it's like a club they're all showing up everywhere getting autographs very strange. It's yeah, and it's a weird thing. I mean, I remember being with Chris Rock's, and a guy was in the lobby with his kids, and then I remember being Sal Vicano and all them practical Joker guys. And I mean, they are just we go to this restaurant. They're just I was with you on that. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, Pittsburgh in right? Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah, and then I mean, uh, 
And it's a weird thing because you don't want to be ever mean to someone, especially because they can have their kid out there. Yeah. But you're also like, this guy is just trying to get this autographs. And they just play the, you know, it's like a sad kind mm -hmm. of, come on, man. Like, you're not going to. And then, like, you would think, like, then you make those guys be jerks. And you're like, dude, every town you are coming to this and your, and your reasoning is not. You're 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 trying not to have a job, right? So you're coming up with this thing, mm -hmm. and then you guilt people into they do the autograph, and then and it might be easier to just have a job. Might be. I mean, you're working <laughs> so hard at this. What if you put that into a real creative venture? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I always see. I always think about that when I see people like panhandling. I'm like, this is hard work. Mm -hmm. You might think about getting a job. Do you tell them that? <laughs> well, no, but. <laughs> But it's like you call the company. It might be you call the easier. panhandling company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you do it the proper way. Like, yeah, it's like you got your whole spiel down. It's like if you put this into a real sales job, you could be making some real money here. Yeah, yeah. The most expensive sports memorabilia <laughs> ever is. Um, I think the perks are different though. Yeah, maybe so. I think panhandling perks are a little bit better than. Yeah. No drug testing policies. Yeah, it's on you your know, own time. Come yeah. and go as you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you set your own hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most expensive memorabilia really ever sold was the original Olympic Games manifesto. This is from the modern Olympics, where the guy wrote up the the idea and the plans and kind of the rules for it, and it sold at Sotheby's auction house for eight point eight million dollars. Jeez, there's maybe like I'm trying to think. Would I want this more? I would. I would almost rather have this than. Uh, baseball card because this is like something you can read it's like you know it's 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 like something that could be in a museum they thought this was going to go for somewhere between 700,000 to a million and it sold for 8.8 .8 million so that guy had a good day whoever the yeah. seller was yeah that would be really cool to have yeah I almost think I would rather have history things now than I would a baseball card. Yeah, Honus or, Wagner's over. Uh, that's a, over a hundred years old. There's yeah, some no, historical I, I, yeah. I, the Honus Wagner, but it'd be like it would need to be that. It needs to be. I know everybody knows this card. Everybody knows. Like, yeah. it's that, and it's the card. Mm. I could see. I mean, you could see, I could see one have some bear, but uh, I guess it's like if you don't get the autograph, or if you don't acquire the thing, then it's like you just bought it. It's like, is that take the special away from it? Because you're just like, oh, so you just had $8 million. Right. And yeah. it's, you know, now I understand buying this because it's like. How else would you have gotten How that? else would you have gotten that? And it's, and you tracked it down. Like, so I guess when, when it's his, that's what I mean when it's history. But it's like, if you're paying, you know, all this money for a Michael Jordan autograph, you're like, well, you just. You just bought it. You just bought it. You, you didn't there's, go no get it. there's no experience tied in with it. That, yeah, there's no story tied in with it. Yeah. This is what a lottery winner's buying. Something like this. <laughs> I just won the lottery. I got 400 million. Yeah, I'll buy these. these yeah. Pay, and then he's drunk one night and forgets what it is and <laughs> throws it away. Uses it yeah. for kindling to start a fire or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. I'm rich. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could almost see. Art, like buying art. I've been thinking about art. Like I'm like, I wonder if I could get in if I if I would get into it. I think I could. Do you like any kind of art in particular? I don't know. I don't know any. But I think when I look at it, I like it on a wall, and I think it's nice. And I could see looking at it, and you're like, All but right. then I also I, maybe I could buy it, and I'd be like, well, that's just stupid. <laughs> I and mean, we have art, Laura. Or I, we Laura, we have art down. I don't ever. I don't know if I look at. I it. do think the older you get, the more like good art is like 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 when you're like late teens, early twenties, like a Salvador Dali poster is like that's big time, you know. Oh, yeah. But like as you get older, like appreciating good art, it feels good. I don't yeah. understand art at all. Well, there's something you see it like you know the Starry Night or something. like if you had the yeah. original one, it's like I could see. Because right. you could stare at it, and I would look. I think you would look at it and be like, "I can't believe this is in my house." Yeah, like that's the stuff that it would like. Right. I would buy something for that. I can't believe because it. I guess it's your journey. Maybe, maybe it's that it's your journey to acquire a piece like that. Right. Like so, the experience with it is how did I get my? You went from I could never 
ever even dream of getting this mm -hmm. to then you have the original. Yeah. And you're like, now that's in my house, that's insane. So all of that journey's tied up in the value in that, of that, in that to picture. You. That's almost like you're you've talked about when you get a watch for all the mm -hmm. significant moments in your career. Yeah. All of those the it's journey. all of that tied up in it. Yeah. But it, but it's got to it's got to you got to be able to keep that. Once you start collecting stuff, because I can even see it with the watches. Like I like them, and I and I, I like that idea. And then you're like, but am I gonna? It's like you almost like you need one. The like one thing has to be tied into it, I guess. So but the, I like I could see for myself like being like, all right, if there was a piece of art that I'm like, I want to somehow get this mm -hmm. original one. Like, how do I make it where I can? Like, it's like I like that challenge of a thing. You know, that's like a fun challenge. Like, how do I get to mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. What do I got to, I got to do some pretty crazy things to, I don't know what I got to do, but I got to do some crazy things to get that. Yeah. Like that's, ex, that's actually, that might be my thing. What if I tell y'all, can you buy this? Well, this Did is the screen painting, which I used to have a poster of this in my dorm room. This but could you thing. ever buy the real one? No, it's I in a think it's in a museum. all of these live in museums now. So how do you ever own this kind of art? There are, I was about to talk about that. So David Geffen, you know, Geffen Records, he's supposedly the b biggest buyer and seller of the art world. He's got original, um, some a lot of these things. It's estimated $2.3 billion. Mm. Um, so I think, like, if, if you paint a ton of stuff, like uh, Van Gogh or any of these guys, there are occasional, a private owner will get a hold of one. And then once it's, they own it, and it just gets passed around, and as long as no one gives it to a museum, you can keep buying it from someone else with more money. But I think the majority of them go to museums. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, and there's. But isn't it is. the museum own it, it? The museum doesn't own it. Doesn't it use like someone owns it, and then they? I think a lot of times someone museum. does donate it. Yeah. Yeah. So or, they could take it back, or you can go. I guess so. I still retain ownership of this, yeah. but I will let you have it in exchange for you just taking care of it uh -huh. and making sure that you yeah the upkeep on it so how do you do that i don't know i don't know if i can i mean this i don't want to how much if you wanted to like i mean you got to price this piece of art in your house now you're all worried about security that's what i'm fire, saying yeah. damage but I, yeah, yes. you give yeah. it to a museum how do i how do i give it to put in an old hickory <laughs> <laughs> country club that yeah. that painting the scream the one we were just looking at uh -huh. in 2012 it sold for 119 million dollars <sighs> wow and at the time it was the most expensive artwork ever sold at an auction so you could buy it Nate. see it seems too scary that's so but where's it honestly. do you know I mean, where it's at now like is it in someone's house? Oh, I'll find I, out. I thought it was I in don't a know museum. Where it lives. So, but that, yeah, that's. I mean, you gotta, you'd have to be a billionaire. But you can even yes. find people that are making good art. You know, it's not these classic paintings, but they're making good art. You know, for you know several thousand dollars. You know, even you know, tens some of, of our thousands. folks. Yeah, they make some good graphic art. Yeah, Steve Cohen, owner of the Mets. He uh, he has a original Van Gogh. His overall. Portfolio is over a billion dollars in art. Jay Z and Beyonce have a half a billion dollars in art in their house, or art that they own. So you can do it. You just gotta. It's expensive to get the the you best. Get stuff. some gold records out there. Yeah, but I think there's some. I mean, how how did Beyonce and Jay Z? How like the, there's no way they spent half a billion dollars on art. It's just worth half a billion. I guess. Yeah, how I mean, do you spend a half a billion. Like, how much money could you have? I know that that's you spend what I'm half a billion on, even if you're worth a billion. Right. I would imagine they would say, "Yeah, how about you don't spend half of it? Yeah. on art. Yeah, but I guess if it's an investment, and you're like, well, this will never go down in price. Yeah, but for it to go never go down in price, there's a point. Where, well, how much money does someone have to have? You have a billion, and you don't think it's ever going to go down. Well, you need people to have like 400 billion for that so there's your limited group of who wants to sell it is i mean you know them yeah, yeah it's you want to call them yeah, yeah. five people. Yeah, it's all status stuff at that point you know you just bring people in and be like look at this mm -hmm. this is how much i paid for it charlie sheen bought one of babe ruth's world series rings for two million dollars so i guess he could just wear it on his hand i think he later sold it but or maybe sold it for two million but he had it for a while 
Because yeah, just it's likes- like you buy something like that. You're not modest about it. You don't go. You're not humble and. And you, you're telling people what you pay. You for. keep it in the closet. No, you don't yeah. even show anybody. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, Scream Payton would be behind my head right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. It's not even in a frame. <laughs> yeah. You're just like out, and you're like, I mean, you're just damaging this. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, this, it's mine. Yeah. This weekend um, at an auction, Bobby Bonilla's famous contract sold for one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Oh, that's cool. The actual paperwork of it. Yeah, his his agent sold it. The who came up with this contract. Uh, uh, do you know about this contract? Yeah. So Bobby Bonilla was played for the Mets, and he had some clause where every- you know, Have you ever heard that name? I Yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah. I think someone told me something about this. If we told day. you he raised NASCAR, though, would you have believed that? Sounds no, like no. Because you know NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't feel like there's a lot. Of, there's some Bobbies, but not a lot <laughs> of Bonillas in there. <laughs> yeah. There's some Bobbies in there, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It basically his contract long after he retired, he gets one point one million dollars every July first, every year till the year twenty thirty five. Oh, so they have there's a Bobby Benia's day. Yes. Right? Yeah. Somebody told me about this. It's Bobby know? Benia Day because yeah. he gets his one point one million from from the Mets. So that contract just sold this weekend for one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Now you also get it says a thirty minute Zoom meeting with him, but then later on it says you get a day with him where you get to go to breakfast, a trip to City Field for batting practice and dinner. Hmm. So you get more than just the contract, but I think I'd pass on the thirty-minute Zoom meeting <laughs> yeah, with Bobby gonna, Bonilla. I, I, I don't know what I would. <laughs> yeah. So that's crazy. What it's you crazy, did, huh? man? I was reading through your contract. I think you got a little more. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I don't. Why would you want the contract? Like I, 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 the you telling me that a guy bought it is as exciting as if the guy said, "Hey, I just bought it. Here it is." If I had to pull it out and show it to you, yeah, I would be. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, I would probably talk about Brian more than I would talk about you. I go, dude. I was talking to Brian today. He said he knows a guy that bought that Bobby. Like that, he wouldn't even. And you're like, no, I'm the one that bought it. You're like, I don't. That's ridiculous. You know? Okay. Yeah. You're not gonna read the contract of it. Yeah. This agent really, though, is crushing it, though. Am I right, though? He's like, he makes that contract and then goes off and sells the contract. Yeah. Yeah. This agent's so. working it. Yeah. Bobby Bonilla's Bobby getting a million dollars every year, but he's still getting his 10%. Yeah. Probably. Mm-hmm. And then he gets another 180000 Yeah. I, well, I, don't, I, I don't think athletes have to pay off their salaries. You know, I think the- it's, I, I'm almost positive because I've talked to them. Okay. I think they make, it's all off field is where they make their money. Oh, interesting. Wait. Or maybe the exact opposite? No. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm thinking of golf. Golf is because is they make the money and they agents don't get anything. From of them. like their winnings? Of their winnings. Oh, okay. But they would get their off the field. Endorsements and yeah. such. Yeah. Another big thing that billionaires are into is rare coins. Um, so the any uh, kind of coins, really. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. But the most expensive coin ever sold for eighteen point nine million last year. It's a gold uh, coin that I guess Roosevelt ended the gold standard back in the nineteen thirties. This is a where they didn't want us using gold as currency anymore, and this is the only. So they melted them all down. These gold double eagle, but one got out. All and, downhill after that, and only one private person has owned this coin, this double eagle, the, the whole time. Eagle. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And uh, wow, eighteen point eighteen point nine million dollars. How much was the value of the actual coin? Was it a dollar coin? I think it was twenty dollars. I read some twenty dollar coin. So. So that's the most valuable. And then the second one is the U.S. Uh, silver dollar. 1794 silver dollar. It's the first coin ever minted when they first, when U.S. became a country and they started doing well, currency. Of those. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that? Uh, 10 million. I do get the idea of you, you own something that like it doesn't exist. Like you're, this is it. It's a one of one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We got, we inherited when my, Great grandfather died. Him and his wife, my great grandfather, they've collected a bunch of random stuff. We got a big bunch of spoons. We got a spoon collection. 
And I guess they're valuable. I guess they look nice. We just kept them under the couch in the living room because we don't we don't know how to display a bunch of spoons. Yeah, but I, I don't. I've never kept anything under the couch, <laughs> even if I didn't want it. Yeah. So Board games. I'm just very confused on why. Your, it I came mean, in this leather. The brilliance of your family, <laughs> I know, I know. and y'all don't know how to like put stuff away. Like you don't, you go, well, what are we gonna do with it? I just slide it under the couch. Yeah, we can't display it. We so can't hide display it. it under hide it under the couch. I guess that is a little odd to keep yeah. it under the couch, but that's where we kept. How it. high was your couch up? <laughs> nah, I think it fit just right. I think that's oh, why like we perfect. did it. We were you like, go, oh, this is. Great. You looked everywhere. You didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to your parents' house. Y'all are big into forks. Y'all yeah. might have all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What else is under there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I need to look around. <laughs> my uh, my mom just texted me this weekend. She found uh, my parents are moving, so she's like going through the garage in their house and found. Uh, and you have a garage. <laughs> And still went under the couch. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with these spoons. Well, I think it's like you got these uh, silver. It's like pure silver. Mm-hmm. So you almost don't want to put them in the garage. That feels dangerous. Yeah. So under the do couch. Do you know what I mean? Is, so yeah. under the couch is a little safer. Yeah, a little safer. She pulled your baseball glove out, <laughs> sold it. <laughs> right. Get rid of that. Um, but she found, uh, we have a Babe Ruth autographed baseball. Oh. Whoa. Found it. Wow. Wow. Um, She's got some sort of certification too, but it's old for my great grandfather. So we're gonna send that in. Do you see, have any idea what the deal is? Sandlot what it might be worth here? Um, I saw on eBay. I saw some sold seven, eight thousand dollars. Look a little wow. worse. Wow. Look a little worse than this one. So maybe so ten thousand. Yeah. Everybody that has a thing, they always go. It's, I saw some. They look. <laughs> they were worse than mine. But yeah, that's what everybody says. That you know, they go, I got a card. I've seen one card. It went for ten grand. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> his card was garbage. And you're <laughs> some of these Babe Ruth uh, balls autographed. Uh, you can't even see the autograph with your naked eye because it's <laughs> faded so much. Yeah. So you have to like look at it under infrared light, and then it'll show up. And those still sell for. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, you would have to probably put it in a case that has that showed the light. Yeah, yeah, so you can wow. see it. I found but a. We'll uh, see. I was reading this weekend about how a Kurt Gibson rookie cards worth some money in good condition, mm-hmm. and I had it, and I found it. I think it's in here, and I'd taken a black marker when I was a kid and blacked out one of his teeth. Oh no! <laughs> so, <laughs> probably not worth as much. Why, Why did you do that? Because I was a kid. I don't know. Just sometimes you're you're just like. That's what kids do. Uh, Most of these are in good condition, but the Kurt Gibson. God, imagine if they, if you you could have just had TV admitted by when you were a kid, <laughs> you wouldn't have been so bored. Uh, so what was it with the spoons? So they got spoons. <laughs> oh, did, did you have another thing with the spoons? Or silver spoons? Are they worth so, something? I think they're worth a lot. Yeah, yeah. literally well, we born know. with a silver spoon in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> no, we're born with a silver spoon under the couch. Yeah. Under yeah. The couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good metaphor yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what we're doing with it now. I that think is these a good metaphor. Things- you had spoons. You had silver spoons. They were just under the couch. They weren't. <laughs> y'all didn't eat. Y'all didn't eat from them. That's yeah, so that's many right. spoons. You had others to eat from. Yeah. But this is one of those things we don't know. We're not going to do anything with these spoons. We don't really care about them. But, but, I'll take but we're like, we'll pass them down. I think you just think I'll just pass them down. If to the you next. need to get rid of them, though, I will take them. You'll take those silver spoons. Yeah. Okay. First one I ever held. I'll loan them to you like a museum. Yeah. 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 And I'll yeah. take them back at some point. Yeah, I'll put them under my couch. Is he's probably got a lot of stuff under there? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and or when he means under his couch, he means the door that's under his couch that goes downstairs into his bunker. <laughs> yeah, like he goes, yeah. He goes, he's got. A, I got a ton of room under my couch. He goes, and you can stand up. There's food for years under there. That's right. Uh, <laughs> if the silver spoons are, you don't want to go see like antique roadhouse. Mm. That'd be like a perfect. Antique road yeah. thing. At my grandmother, she had a uh, uh, guy come and do an appraisal of all her stuff. So I don't, we haven't looked at those spoons in particular, but I think at some point we'll take it in. Mm-hmm. We had a weird pot that we inherited from our great grandfather, too, that was worth a lot. And then we had a couple rugs. Just in a normal house with all a bunch of other stuff, we had these like a really yeah. expensive rug. I read about a guy who was borderline homeless. He'd down on his luck and he had a Navajo blanket that thought was worth nothing. And then somehow he found out someone, I think he went to one of those antique roadshow things. It was worth $1.5 million. Wow. And then he sold it? Yeah. I think it sold at auction for $1.5 million. Wow. 
Yeah. And he was using it as a homeless guy? I mean, he wasn't homeless, but he just had a wreck where I think maybe part of his leg got amputated, and he was just barely getting by. And and then he sold this Navajo blanket. He's wrapping his leg up with that blanket. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's why I sold so much. I thought it was blood from... (laughs) I like the term borderline homeless. You know what I mean? That's that's a fun term. It's you know, like you're not homeless, but off the grid. You're almost there. If you lived off the grid, you could be like if someone was like, I don't if they, they couldn't wrap their head around what you mean, you'd be like, borderline homeless. Yeah, right. Like, or I you might have, be really homeless, but you're choose it. Yeah. Borderline. I got a place. I got a I couple got a place. places. Got a couple places. <laughs> yeah. Uh thoroughbred thoroughbred racehorses. It's a big collector thing for billionaires. Most of the the most expensive ones are in the United Arab, am I right? How do you yeah, say? United yeah. Arab Emirates. Emir- how did you say? The Emir- UAE. UAE. Okay, Dubai, all that. But uh, <laughs> I thought you were really saying that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we talked about it once before on here, and I think I a could, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but one horse sold for seventy million dollars. Wow. And uh, this is back in two thousand. He did win the Kentucky Derby, which was about two million in prize money. But they use them. For stud fees, um, that's where you make most of your money. So it's one hundred fifty thousand dollars to have this horse breed with your horse to try to make more uh, pure champions, brand, champion horses, and then it eventually dropped and he retired in <laughs> twenty twenty. I don't think they got their seventy million back. From yeah, I would uh, imagine that doesn't seem like that high of a. I mean, if you bought something for seventy million and you're charging one hundred fifty thousand, yeah, I would think. Well, that's not you. You would never be able to get your money back. It seems like it. Yeah, that'd be four hundred and sixty-six. That horse has got to be busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that many times to get it back to yeah. get your seventy. Will Chamberlain. Back. Yeah, yeah, just the, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's the Will Chamberlain of horses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jewelry. It's another big thing. Now, most of these they don't know who has them because they always keep it secret. Uh, they think at one time Elizabeth Taylor had the biggest collection of jewelry. Um, over a billion dollars, I think, until mm. she died. And uh, I'm oh, sorry, not over a billion, 157 million. It's a little off there. But she died and they auctioned them off. But at one time, she had the biggest collection. It, what's interesting, the fact, just the fact that she owned it definitely increased the value of it. Yeah. I guess so that's if you're true. that famous and you're like, well, I can just own it. And just the fact that I have it, you can build it. Yeah. So that's another way to get, yeah. Like you could think that with collecting stuff to be like, all right, if you're never going to get that one thing, you're like, but how can I make something? I've don't know if this is true. I've read that Mike Trout will not sign. There's one card of his own that he won't sign because it just becomes too valuable. One of his rookie cards. He's like, I just, if I sign that, that's like a, it messes up the whole market. That'll mm-hmm. just become a crazy valuable card. So I don't know sign. Mike Trout. Is that He's a, a baseball, baseball player? player? Yeah. It yeah. seems like a baseball name. Mike it's Trout. It's a great name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so he does it maybe no that is crazy yeah so he can make money like if if he's is he in on the sales and so therefore he doesn't want to just well, no it, it would just disrupt the whole market because because this particular card and autograph would be this valuable it feels cocky i guess i'm trying like, to figure out why I he cares you know it's worth so much that if i <laughs> sign it it's just astounding well what if he said i mean he's setting himself up or he could set his kid up he could set up a family member just that to guy, go like yeah. i'll sign it I'll sign one for you, and you can go sell it. It's the only one. That's so much. And it's pressure. the only one that I would ever sign. Literally, just by me doing this, yeah, I can give generational wealth to your family. Yeah, yeah. Stamps. Huh. Stamps is a big one <laughs> for old and young, and rich and. Yeah, but the uh, young bucks are into stamps, huh? Yeah, in Asia especially, that's it's kind of become a big thing. These they think it's a good investment. What's so it called? Canoodling. I don't know. I hadn't heard that. That's what stamp t- collecting is? Yeah, finagling. Well, I've heard that term. I didn't know it for stamp collecting, but China and Saudi Arabia are really big into stamp collecting now. Philatelist. That's what if, it is. Uh, yeah, I bet you could think of like, what would be the next thing? Like, what could be something now that's like, just keep it? I've got some stuff on here. Oh, really? That I was just going to kind of end on. Uh, Fabergé egg, which I think Ocean's 12, that was what they stole. Mm-hmm. There was 65 made in Russia, and then there was a revolution, and they all got lost and now there's 10 i think that are left to the private owners how's there like do people just lose this stuff you know in world war ii nazis destroyed so much artwork oh really they came through and burned a bunch and stole it all 
and World War II really messed up a lot of what was that's I just watched Saddam's Red. Uh, yeah, Red. I watched the movie Red Notice. Okay. On Netflix, and it's with uh, Dwayne Johnson and Ron uh, Goslin Reynolds. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. But there they go, and they I think they find something that's like all this stuff that's like a the Nazis oh, like Dwayne Johnson is dropping the movies, huh? Yeah, I this mean, is an older movie. Left or it came out two thousand twenty one. Twenty one. It's like, <laughs> it's a classic. It is. I talk. I about bring up Shell Shake Redemption. <laughs> You're like, don't tell me. Yeah, <laughs> I hadn't seen it yet. Yeah, this one I, I watched it, and uh, but it's like the idea like there could could there be some art like I guess there's like could there be did they take you know would they have they destroyed it but like maybe they knew like hey this stuff is out there because it's like how much because it is like I, our our stuff just gets lost you're like how's it lost mm-hmm. it was under the couch and then you <laughs> sold the place forgot to you're forgot like about keep it. the couch forgot yeah. to move the spoons next thing you know family moves in they're like we got these valuable spoons here and they live under they don't ever look under the couch <laughs> yeah they're just happy that there was even a couch in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> such a good like, couch why would i move it yeah that family couldn't afford spoons they only had to eat cereal forks and then they just never knew <laughs> one day they, found when they it. finally move out and they go he goes i'd say the only thing was this town doesn't sell spoons <laughs> not a lot of spoons around not here. a lot of spoons around here and you go dang I'm so. You lived here for 25 years. There is the most spoons. <laughs> the most. And Actually, the best. why they don't sell spoons is because the most and the best spoons. We got them all. We look got at, them all look underneath that couch right look now. Look under that couch right now. You're going to feel stupid. <laughs> look under that couch. <laughs> Who doesn't clean under the couch? You don't know how to clean under the couch once? <laughs> he said they eat their cereals with a fork. That's yeah. just such a funny picture. <laughs> Never get yeah. the milk. Never, Never get, get the milk. <laughs> just cereal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, classic cars. Jay Leno owns almost 200 automobiles and motorcycles wow. worth 150 million. Seinfeld sold his collection in 2016 worth 22 million. He has Porsches. Yeah. One of his Porsches sold for 5.3 million. Wow. Dollars. I didn't know that. I knew those two. Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah. He owns uh, VW bus models, and he has a, whole, a fluffy museum where he displays all his VW Volkswagen buses. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where's the museum at? Uh, wherever Fluffy the lives, fluffy I guess. Fluffy museum. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> He's got over oh, 80. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe the museum has something to do with uh, him, like with the Volkswagen. I guess that was that was. His, I mean, he was seventeen years. There was seventeen. Yeah, so he. It was his first car, so there's definitely sentimental value to this. Yeah. That's. Uh, what would the Napar Getty Museum be? Uh, I, I, you know, I always think about trying to collect something, and I can never figure out what to collect. Because I don't think I care. Golf balls? No, nah, but I, I, I just go, then I don't care. Yeah. And then I like I those golf bags. Weren't you collecting those for a while? I have some of those, but those are just for the the room. But it's like Jason Day gave me. Uh, I got one of his golf bags that he used in the Masters his first year, and uh, uh, he finished second. And then Augustine gave me one of his tour bags. That'd be worth something. August John Augustine goes off and becomes huge then mm-hmm. but he never used it but it's i don't yeah I, I just try to think like what could i collect and i don't know what i would i don't know what i want to collect enough that i care about like i don't know i don't know if i appreciate that maybe that's it i have a hard time appreciating the these kind of things like cars i don't really appreciate i like those watches but i don't then i realize like i'm not appreciating like a person that buys these watches okay. i bet a lot i of- like the watches and i like the but it's like to me it's more about i wore it on that and that and it meant for the special like i have to tie it in yeah i guess there's a movie called bling ring where about a bunch of teenagers who would break into hollywood stars homes and steal stuff and orlando bloom had three million dollars worth of watches that they stole from his home he was really into watches. There's a lot of celebrities on here. They're really, really into Rolexes and stuff like so that. So this was based off a true story, the bling ring? 
I mean, I think it's a true story. And then they made a movie about it, about how these teens, they're called the Hollywood Hills Burglars. So, yeah, it's based on a. <laughs> All right. You go, was that based on a true story? And you go, I think it was a true story. And then they based a movie on yeah, it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a- Circular. Yeah. Who's on first? <laughs> it look like I might be walking to something tonight. The there bling ring. Yeah. Bling ring. That? that seemed, yeah, that's like a clueless sequel, I think. Yeah, it's not, like the, it. not the it not the like uh, not the poster I would imagine. Yeah, I meant to mention you kind of mentioned on that baseball card where the guy wasn't centered. Error cards are a big thing because basically mistakes made by the company. And there was one of the most famous ones, Billy Ripken, Cal yeah. Ripken's brother. Do you know this card? Mm-hmm. It had the obscenity written on the end of the bat, and it made it on the baseball card. So if you have one of those, it's worth a lot of money because they quickly. I got a bunch of WCW cards. I feel like that whole thing was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, I always thought I had one of those cards, but then I think maybe I just saw one of those. Cards. Let's say yeah. one of those that maybe I read about it. There's the, a WCW. I do agree. I never got into the WCW. Yeah, like the ones with the yellow around it. You yeah. had a bunch of these. Oh, I got so many of those. Maybe they could be worth something. Yeah, people, you know. Put that in the Dusty Slay Museum. Yeah. I agree with the WCW. I, I uh, And then that it hurt me with wrestling. Once they all combined, I was like, now I'm really out. Yeah. I could never get into WCW. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the NWO years were uh, were something. They were something. Yeah, Hollywood Hogan. Mm-hmm. I mean. Goldberg. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, there's a Del Murphy that's the negative one on the card. So it looks like he's batting yeah, left-handed, I, I think, yeah. instead of – so. Um, the, so those are if you find one of those rare cards they're worth something keep them yeah. keep them alright so here's a few things that they think could be worth something down the road so if you have one of these keep them uh, McDonald's plastic straws <laughs> mm. I guess McDonald's doesn't do plastic straws anymore mm-hmm. no they still do maybe oh. it's some kind but of, it's talking about uh, the, the yellow and the red and the white like the yeah. coloring of yeah, the like McDonald's a, straw but they still do sh- uh, okay well I think they're phasing them out I don't yeah. think you can get one in the UK and they think soon there won't be any. So if you have some, you might want to keep them. I think America will hold on. Yeah, I'll have them. Yeah. You'll have them even if McDonald's stops. You'll you'll find a way. Uh, no, I don't know, but I'm not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, go grab some right now. Are we talking just plastic straws that you just like take out of the wrapper, or like it's a special McDonald's straw? How do you open a straw? I like to. This has well, fascinated me because yeah, everybody I mean, does. If you look around, everybody does it differently. Yeah, but Sometimes it's something I'll you don't think about. There. I've never peel it off. So you peel off the top. Sometimes you can't, or you can do it like this and pull it. That's when you wait tables. You hold the end and then pull the rest of it off. That way you can leave the tip with the okay paper on there. I should almost say Starbucks has got a new their straw. I mean, you got to. It's like trying to uh, hard boiled egg. It's trying to get the shell off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it just yeah. sticks to the. You're just like scraping it, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I I I don't like paper straws, so I don't want to use those. And so then they found they they went to this plastic. They've made it worse. I, you almost like just go back to the paper. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't, and that, and I really don't like paper because you can't just you. It doesn't move off. It like sticks to it. Uh, it just gets awesome. Yeah, I think I always would do that, and then. Uh, I what do. do you do? I always look in the hole to make sure nothing's inside of it. What could be inside of it? Oh, just some Maybe paper? paper or something. Okay. I just always I do it, and then I give it a little, a little glance. Have you ever found anything in there? Uh, I think one. I did one. I, I don't – maybe not, but then I think I did one time to remind myself, this is why we do it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I remember telling myself that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You did it. Yeah. Do you always use straws? I'm. Uh, No. Not a, not sitting down. I don't. I use them. The only time I like them is uh, with coffee, like a Starbucks or something, uh, or a uh, fountain drink. I always use a fountain drink. Fountain I don't. Drink. Man, not every time, but I I like a nice I a nice fountain drink. Yeah, straw with a fountain drink is uh, that's the way to it's go. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. styrofoam nice. cup. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I don't like a styrofoam cup. Oh, styrofoam cup's the best. Mm. Tastes better out of there. Yeah, I'm telling you. All right. Well. <laughs> some McDonald's plastic straws recently sold for a few hundred dollars on eBay to some people in the UK because they can't get them. Wow. All right. Um, Just buy a plane ticket here. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You You can get them as much as you want. Probably costs more than a few hundred. Um, Get a visit of town. Yeah. Get something out of it. 
Uh, the original Amazon Echo, that's like the round base speaker, I guess, um, because it'll just be like a flip phone or one of the block phones or whatever. They think that'll be worth something someday. And it'll have probably a lot of somebody's secrets in it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, a flip phone, is that even worth anything? That's a good question. I don't know. I said that like nowadays, they're worth so much. Uh, if my not, mom still has one. I'm sure it will be. These things, by the way, you talked about, you joked about episodes ago about uh, an Amazon, an Alexa riding a Roomba I wasn't around the joking, house. Though, but yes. Amazon just bought Roomba, Ooh. the company, and people are worried about it because now Amazon will just have a map of your house. Yeah. They'll know if you have a crib in your room. They'll know. If you have you, spoons under your couch. They'll know all that yeah. stuff. All yeah. that. I posted that video on my Facebook and some, du- some dudes got very upset with me about it. They were so mad that I had made that joke. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if you're if, you, if you're listening, there may or may not have been quotation marks around. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah, I mean, they were like, oh, but you have a cell phone, and I'm like, well, yeah, it's hard to live without a cell phone these days. But I don't need the the Roomba roaming around the house. It's almost like I'll give you. I'm letting you have some. Ac- I'm letting you have access, but it doesn't mean you get just all the right. access. Yes, I'm gonna draw the line somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they bought Roomba for $1.7 billion. Mm. So I'm sure they're going to have a little camera on there. It's just going to know about everything in your home. It'll be like the robot in what, Rocky Three? <laughs> I think you Rocky? mentioned that once before. Yeah. That really stuck with you, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> character ever in a movie. <laughs> it was like taller than a person. It's the Yeah, it's the worst character ever to be. And then iPods and iPod Show. I guess the iPods, they've stopped making them. Um, I think technology is going to get so crazy that, I mean, it almost would be like if you had an iPod shuffle, it'd be an art piece. I guess that's what it would be more than. Well, they said after Guardians of the Galaxy came out, uh, and they used a Sony Walkman in, in that, that Sony Walkman's shot up in value because it's like a art piece. It's like a retroactive, retro piece. Yeah. <laughs> Not retroactive. So they think the same thing with the iPods because they don't make them anymore. Yeah. I could see you have a bunch of these things that someone could come over and touch it. and But it's like, I don't think it'd ever be, because you'd want to touch it. Like, if I want to show Harper a Sony Walkman, yeah. you know, like, I would be like, I'd want her to, like, press it and, like, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's hard to keep it in, like, mint It's condition. crazy to think about. She's never used, like, CDs, huh? No, I mean, I think for her, she'll be, like, she'll probably kind of remember DVDs. Like, enough... And maybe it's a Blu-ray. Like there, like we had, I had, we had a Blu-ray player. We had like I've had some like Rio or some those animated shows for her on some of the things. But yeah, like it's never gonna like I for her will be like yeah I kind of remember DVDs, you know like I kind of like I remember Atari, but we had an Atari. But it's like I, I remember more Sega Genesis than I do Atari. But I think I remember Atari, you know. Mm-hmm. So she'll remember some DVDs. Wild. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. That's it. That is it. That's it. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening. As always, uh, I'm trying to think where I'll be this week. I'll be in Wisconsin Dells. Ooh. Maybe somewhere else. Wisconsin Dells. And then Vail and all that. Neighborhoodsy.com. Check that out. I will be with uh, Leanne Morgan this weekend yeah. in Davenport, Iowa, and Omaha, Nebraska. All right. That's fun. I got a big weekend. Coming up, I'm Thursday night. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, at the Columbus Funny Bone. First time headlining there. Nice. And then the next day, I'm going to Arlington, Virginia, at the Arlington Draft House. Friday, Saturday, four shows. Come on, great, up. great venues. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. I'm excited. Uh, this weekend, I'm off, but next weekend, I have or next week, I'm, I'm at the uh, uh, Iowa State Fair with John Christ, and then I'm in Wichita. Kansas, and then Kansas City Improv, and then Columbia, Missouri. All right. So, I like it. DustySlay.com. DustySlay.com. Uh, yeah. As always, thank you guys for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it, as always, and we love you, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.